Hello. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to Cucumber Training Program. My name is Surendra Jagannatham. So far, guys, uh, uh, we have a couple of uh, videos on Selenium mobile automation testing using APM and uh, AngularJS automation testing tool, which is a framework, basically, protractor. We created uh, videos on different, different things. And now we would like to bring my project experience on Cucumber. Okay, so uh, till a couple of months before, I haven't worked on a Cucumber. So we recently started using Cucumber in our project just by integrating with Selenium. So uh, initially, I struggled a lot to gather the documentation on Cucumber, to know the basics on the tool, to uh, majorly I encountered the issues in configuration part, framework creation, and all these areas. Whenever I started working on a cucumber, these are all the various areas where I faced a lot of challenges. So that's the reason we are creating this particular course to explain my project experience and how to handle a project using cucumber. And one more thing is if you don't have a any idea on selenium and apm as part of this training program okay as part of this training program we are going to cover apm selenium and protractor videos as well okay moving further with respect to the session topics we will add Cucumber plus Selenium integration and even Cucumber plus APM integration also we are gonna study in our classes. Okay, roughly we need about eight to ten hours on this a complete training program to cover only the Cucumber basics followed by you have a uh, 20 hours of selenium videos eight hours on apm videos another three hours on protractor videos which you need to follow so that you can correlate the things and finally at the end of this uh, training program you will be in a position to handle your project using cucumber with respect to either selenium or apm this is what the ultimate agenda is and moreover, we are not going to study complete a theory concepts and a practical concept separately starting from the day one. We are going to move with a real time orientation with a bunch of examples and the challenges, whatever I have faced while automating a project using a cucumber and all those stuff we are going to study within this training program. I hope you will get a good knowledge at the end of this training program and you will be in a position to crack an interview. All the best. Thank you. Bye bye. So guys, uh, from the today's lecture onwards, I would like to discuss uh, about some Cucumber behavior driven concepts. Okay, a overview on a BDD, overview on a BDD and why we need this and how exactly does a BDD is a differ from selenium so these are all the most important things which we need to know okay so usually thousands of questions will rise in our mind uh, stating that uh, why we need to go for these uh, bdd what exactly the advantage of these bdd what makes difference of this bdd when compared to selenium the simple point out over here is we already have an idea about selenium and how to work on that particular selenium so generally wherever we are working on a seleniums we will create a framework right uh, we will create a framework where in which in the framework depending on an uh, application we will capture the properties of file and then we will obtain the page objects from that and from then uh, we will create a business functions right uh, so we will create a business functions from that and uh, once the business functions are got uh, created uh, we will create the various uh, kinds of a uh, test 
Finally, we will call the tests there. Okay, finally, we will call the tests there. So this is the process what we usually do in a Selenium, right? Assume that, okay, this framework was a completely prepared by Surendra. Okay, Surendra is a person who has good knowledge on Selenium. He prepared this framework. So, uh, assume that we share this uh, framework to Ramya, who is a customer who don't uh, have any idea on a uh, programming. Surendra shared a complete framework to her, but Ramya don't have any idea on a programming language. So for her, the framework, whatever we prepared, looks like some Japanese language, right? So the ultimate point is basically the end user won't understand anything about the framework, logics, whatever we have implemented. There comes this BDD framework, which is using a cucumber and a jerkin. So basically, okay, we will study about them moving further. So the only thing what we are doing using this particular cucumber is Okay, so the only thing what exactly we are doing using this particular cucumber is we will create a feature file in cucumber. Okay, so we will create a feature file within this particular cucumber. So what exactly the feature file contains? A simple example is assume that our, our scenario is login to an app so the feature file name is gonna be login page dot feature this is gonna be the feature file name and the content out over here is open the application enter username password click on a login button Verify the logout button. So in the feature file, I have given these three lines of a code. See, before these three lines, we will have a given when, then, and too many keywords are there. I'm not explaining those keywords now. But the feature file looks like open, enter, verify the login button. Assume that we have a shared this a feature file to a client just by looking into this a login not a feature they can understand that okay this is a login page related code where in which the first line will open the application the second line will enter the username and a password and a click on a login button and the third line will click on a logout button so this is how just by looking into the feature file anyone can simply understand okay just by looking into the feature file anyone can simply understand what exactly it is gonna work great so immediately a simple question will rise in our mind okay i specified three commands in the feature file then how come those commands will perform operation on a browser so here for every feature file we need to implement the steps in this case we have three steps these three are steps we need to write down step definition for all those steps defined in the feature file where internally we are using our selenium java programs only so 
so this is the most important thing which you need to remember guys so only thing what you are doing means internally we are using only the selenium java program under this particular open the application so it means from the open the application we are establishing a relationship with our java program where in which we are writing down our selenium java program internally so finally when we execute the feature file it will move to the java codes under the step definition and it will execute the program that's it as simple as it guys so the ultimate point with this cucumber what we are gonna do is with this cucumber we are specifying the various kinds of feature files and with respect to the feature files we are writing down the step definitions inside the step definitions we are using selenium plus java commands only but within the feature file there we need to use certain keywords like a given when then and etc background too many keywords are there which we need to use under the jerkins which we will study about these jerkin keywords in the next class so in the today's class we have seen is. so if you observe guys the only thing is anyone who don't have any idea or automation testing just by looking into the feature file they can understand that what kind of a logic it's getting executed internally we are using selenium java only so don't think that this bdd is a completely different so in bdd the most important things we are defining are a feature file and a step definition these are all the two things inside the step definition even we are writing our selenium java commands whatever we have implemented in our normal selenium framework okay so whatever we have implemented in our normal selenium framework that's it so the major difference is the feature file and as well as the step definitions file and executing that so this is an overview on this cucumber bdd in the next session i would like to show you the configuration required for this bdd what is a jerkin how to know the keywords and all those things we will study in the next class okay fine so that's all i have see you again in the tomorrow in the today's class i would like to give a brief overview on bdd and a brief overview on a cucumber so what exactly this BDD is, what we are going to learn from this BDD and what is a cucumber and what are all the various advantages with respect to this cucumber. These are all the three most important topics which we are going to study in our today's class. Nowadays we can see a majority of the job openings contains a BDD. So what exactly this BDD means? So BDD means it's a behavior driven development okay so bdd it's a behavior driven development what exactly the meaning of this particular one is it is a methodology okay it is a methodology to check and to test your code or application so the answer for this BDD is it is a methodology basically. Okay. It is a methodology wherein which it is a useful in order to check the application functionality or the application behavior. We are using this particular BDD. Okay, great. So what exactly this BDD is gonna do? Okay. So in the BDD, in the behavior driven development whatever we write must go in given when then and and steps only so in bdd whenever you are writing something we need to use these four steps which is given when 
then and and also these are all the four different things which we are gonna use in the BDD so here a simple example for this one is assume that we would like to write down a uh, method for login to an application okay so here given accessing gmail application when enter username password and click on a login button when we perform this action then verify the login functionality then verify the login functionality see here we are writing this particular syntax or the functionality in a given when and a then a person who don't have any idea about a programming also can look into this file and he can understand what exactly we are performing right what exactly we are performing he can understand that so the first line we are trying to access the gmail application once the page got loaded we are trying to enter the username and a password then we are verifying the login functionality so it means in a given when and as well as a then structure we are explaining a end user just like a person we can consider as a ba or the product owner <laughs> these persons they don't have uh, any idea about a uh, programming and other stuff just by looking into these uh, files they can understand that what exactly in the application it is happening what exactly the test cases we are developing how exactly it's gonna work uh, everything they can easily understand assume that if we write the same code using a selenium we will create a method for a login and then in that particular method we will enter three different commands two will enter a username and a password and the last command will click on a search button or else the login button so a person like a ba or a product owner just by looking into the code it will it, it they can't understand that what exactly it is performing the operations whereas just by looking into the given when and then syntaxes basically anyone who don't have uh, any idea about automation testing also just by looking into these annotations they can simply understand that for that particular reason this bdd comes into the picture okay for that particular reason this bdd comes into the picture great so what exactly a cucumber is so this cucumber is a tool which supports behavior driven development okay it offers a way to write a test that anybody can understand so the bottom line is basically <coughs> excuse me <coughs> bottom line out over here is in writing this particular stuff is just by looking into this particular code anyone can simply understand this particular stuff for that particular reason we are writing down this particular stuff generally when we are working on our projects either BAs or the product owners will prepare the scenarios like this like above and after that we will write our code inside them okay we will write down the code inside them okay after that we will integrate our program inside that okay great so what are all the benefits why we are using this particular one if something we are adopting means we should have some benefits for that so what are all the benefits with respect to this particular component we need to know this benefits right it is basically helpful to involve the business stakeholders who can't easily read the codes okay so for those persons who don't have any idea about that particular code they can easily understand that okay and moreover this cucumber focuses on okay this cucumber focuses on end user 
experience basically okay this cucumber focuses on end user experience and uh, moreover the style of a writing test allows for reuse in our test case so it means we are gonna write it for one time and we can use it for n number of times and execution is a bit easy with respect to this particular one and this is an efficient tool for testing okay this is an efficient tool for plugin basically okay and moreover like selenium this cucumber, uh, this cucumber supports other programming languages like java groovy etc so as per our perspective we are gonna study about a selenium plus cucumber okay we are gonna study about a selenium plus a cucumber within our sessions okay so this is a brief overview basically what exactly a cucumber is why we need to use this a cucumber okay it's just an approach which we are going to write down the information in a plain english using a jerkins language so here usually a most important thing will arise in our mind what exactly this is a given when and a then means basically this is a given when and a then is a jerkin language slowly we are going to study about this jerkin language see why this cucumber comes into picture let me explain you about my project as an example okay in our organization we already have a project or a framework a robust framework implemented using selenium which can fit for any type of applications any type of web applications we can use this particular framework okay any web applications we can use this particular framework the only reason why we are not using this particular one is the BAs are the product owners just by looking into the selenium codes they can't understand basically what is happening and what exactly we are writing everything can be understandable by a person who has a programming language knowledge itself if a person who don't have any idea about a programming language they can't understand what exactly it is performing an operation behind that for that particular reason we thought to choose a tool which can be written in plain english okay which can be written in a plain english where anyone can look into that they can simply understand okay they can simply understand what exactly the logics are the business flow is okay for that particular reason we have a chosen that a cucumber is the basic and a bottom line the reason is we are going to write down the scenarios in plain english using given when and then okay using just a given when and a then these are jerkins keywords basically anyone just by looking into these keywords they can simply understand that okay what exactly the logic it is performing for that particular reason this bdd we are using in our projects not only in my project everyone who is preferring this bdd means to easily understandable for everyone we are using that so ultimately we are gonna define the scenarios using given when and then so these are all the four keywords which we are gonna write down in our scenarios for each and every keyword you need to define the logic in a backend which should trigger and which should execute the relation between them the keywords and as well as the selenium programs which we will see moving further but the bottom line is this cucumber is designed for easily understandable okay to understand this particular stuff more easily we are using this particular stuff okay so another simple question out over here is basically why we use a cucumber with selenium right so why can't we use a cucumber with any other stuffs the reason is basically as said earlier majority of the organizations are preferring selenium right majority of the organizations are preferring selenium as their automation testing tool to automate their application functionality 
okay so the organizations which are using selenium they want to integrate a cucumber with the selenium as cucumber make it easy to read to understand the application flow the reason why selenium plus a cucumber is having a great demand means basically <coughs> excuse me easy to understand easy to read basically and easy to understand the application flow for that particular reason we are using this particular stuff and cucumber acts like a bridge between the people okay so like uh, the software engineers and as well as a ba the manual testers and as well as an automation testers the manual testers and as well as a developers guys you know that the manual testers are uh, people basically who don't have uh, any idea in automation testing there in some organizations there are a few sets of people who will completely focus on manual testing in some scenarios if we prepare the automation test scripts using selenium and if we give those selenium scripts to them that would be a bit difficult for them even to understand the logic and to execute the logic for that particular reason if we incorporate this uh, cucumber with our selenium then that would be easy for be a manual tester product owners everyone who don't have a, any idea about automation testing just by looking into the scenarios they can understand what exactly the business flow it is going on and what exactly the logics we have implemented they can easily understand for that particular reason we are going for selenium plus cucumber that's it okay for that particular reason we are going for selenium plus cucumber that's it this is the most important thing guys okay so this is the bottom line why cucumber is why we are integrating cucumber with selenium so in the next class we will study the various kinds of jar files required for us specifically to work on a cucumber okay the complete cucumber configuration along with the plugins the additional plugins required for us to work on cucumber we will study that particular concept in the next class cool in the today's class what we are going to discuss means the configuration what exactly required for us to work on cucumber right so this is the most important thing which we need to do the first and most important thing is jdk which is required for us in our machine and which is 1.8 version we need to download and install that we need to download and install jdk in our machine so the simple steps let me show you how can we download this configuration also okay okay so the simple steps uh, how can we download this one means let me navigate to google home page and i am entering jdk free downloads and I'm clicking on a JDK standard version 8 and here you can download this win 64 exe file and you can install that this is the first thing which you need to download so download a JDK 1.8 and install that once after successfully downloading this particular one the next one we need to download is an Eclipse editor oxygen okay we can download eclipse editor latest version which is an oxygen so here eclipse editor free downloads and uh, i'm clicking on a first link basically so which is navigating to eclipse official website a downloads page and here is an oxygen which is the latest version download these a 64 bit of an oxygen it's going to download an exe file just install the tool editor in your machine okay install the same editor in your machine and then the next and most important thing which we need to do is install cucumber plugin to our eclipse editor so i just opened my eclipse editor now to this eclipse editor I'm going to help Eclipse marketplace. So here I'm going for Eclipse 
help marketplace and then from the marketplace what I'm gonna do right now means I will type cucumber so in the search field I'm not doing anything so I'm just entering a cucumber and I clicked on a go button just I entered a cucumber in the search field and I clicked on a go button so here if you observe for me basically the natural 0 0.76 okay it is a displaying as a install for me so whereas for you people it will display as an install just click on a install so this is so if you observe what exactly this plugin is this is a cucumber jerkin plugin okay this is a cucumber jerkin plugin okay so here there is a cucumber jerkin plugin which you need to add it to your editor once after you added that one it's going to display as an install successfully for us with which we can confirm that this plugin was a successfully installed okay fine so the next point is okay once after we downloaded this particular one the next and most important point of what we need to do is we need to set environmental variables for java home Okay, we need to set the environmental variables for the Java home Maven home and M2 home that's it so these are all the three things are basically which we need to set environmental variables for once after we set these environmental variables for all these things then directly okay then directly we can use this particular cucumber in our steps usually a simple question will rise in our mind how come I can install Maven to my Eclipse the answer is by default whenever we are downloading latest version of Eclipse it comes by default with the Maven so we no need to download the maven explicitly okay we no need to download these uh, maven explicitly to your editor so the only thing what uh, you people need to do is uh, directly here maven for eclipse sorry maven free downloads okay directly i would like to download the maven so i'm clicking on this particular first link which is navigating to the maven official website from where we can download these uh, maven zip folder from here okay you can download these uh, maven zip folder from here once after you downloaded it's gonna come maven folder is uh, coming as a zip file unzip it okay the only thing what you need to do is unzip it once after we performed an unzip operation for that the only thing what you need to do is open the maven folder copy the folder location and simply update it under system variables in maven home and m2 home okay so uh, the simple point out over here is i'm navigating to uh, i just want to show you this one right click on this pc properties advanced system settings i'm just navigating to the environmental variables to show you this one see m2 home i pointed see i downloaded this one in my local machine see users surgeon documents auto id examples apache maven home I pointed up to here which is the Maven home location I have a given up to here so the M2 home and as well as a Maven home both are pointing to the same folder location once we are done I am updating the path environmental variables are here with the M2 home and a Maven home and a Java home these are all the three things but if you remember guys if you have a, an idea on selenium okay if you have an idea on selenium if you look at these a uh, configuration to work on the selenium we downloaded the jdk and we installed the jdk to work on selenium we downloaded and we installed eclipse editor to our machine and we have a written programs in our eclipse editor and even we downloaded the maven and we configured the maven so to work on a cucumber 
the only thing what exactly you need to download is a cucumber plugin to your Eclipse editor is the only thing which you need to download explicitly apart from that you no need to download anything whatever the configuration we use it for selenium we just need to use the same thing the only thing explicitly which you need to download is a cucumber plugin to your eclipse editor which contains a jerkins and other information as of now we don't know what exactly a jerkins is how can we use these jerkins in a real time and all those things we will see moving further with an examples of each and everything but this is the configuration required for us to work on a project a cucumber project basically jdk eclipse editor cucumber plugin to your eclipse editor downloading the maven configuring the maven and updating the environmental variables with a maven home and as well as an m2 home this is the only configuration required for us to update in our machine okay so this is the basic info in the next lecture i would like to show you what is a jerkin why we are going for a jerkin what is the significance of that and other details we will continue in the next class okay thank you hello hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last class we studied about the configuration part required for us to work on cucumber where in which we have seen what are all the plugins we need to install to our eclipse editor how to configure java and all those things now in the today's class i would like to explain about configuration in eclipse by creating a project okay just by creating a project what are all the things we need we are gonna specify or we are gonna study from now on and one small thing before moving ahead which we need to know is assume that we would like to write down a selenium program okay so in order to write down a selenium program the basic things required for us are we need to download and add various kinds of selenium related jar files to our project right we need to add a selenium related jar files to our project then only we can write our selenium codes the same way in order to work on a cucumber even we need to add a couple of jar files related to cucumber okay we need to add a couple of uh, jar files related to cucumber fine so what are all the various uh, jar files uh, how we are going to write down these uh, add these uh, jar files and all those things we will study now so in order to start working on this particular one the first and most important thing which we people need to do i'm making a note of these steps here steps to configure cucumber okay so i'm even i am highlighting this particular one so what are all the various steps which we need to do the first one is open the eclipse editor cross check whether cucumber plugin which is naturals was already installed or not if not please install it okay if that component was not installed please install that particular component to your editor okay so i already opened my eclipse editor to cross check whether that component was installed or not i am going to help and eclipse marketplace directly i am switching to an eclipse marketplace to see whether this cucumber plugin got installed or not so directly i am searching for cucumber here and i clicked on a search button now and from the search results naturals 0.7.6 which is a cucumber plugin and this is a jerkin plugin see for more information whenever you clicked on that so it is displaying that it's going to be generating the script in a jerkin syntax so far we don't know what exactly a jerkin is today we are going to study about a jerkin as well for me it is displaying as a installed so for you people if it was a not installed 
just click on a install button click on a next 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 and finish the installation steps it might take roughly four to five minutes to install this plugin great we are done with the first step and the next step what we need to do is create a new maven projects okay usually a simple question will rise in our mind why maven project is for selenium sometimes we created a basic java project right why for cucumber you need to go for a maven project the simple answer for this one is whenever we are creating a maven project it will comes with a default structure and moreover whenever you are okay whenever we are working on a cucumber it will look so for similar folder structure hence we are creating a new maven project only with earlier versions of eclipse editor we need to install this maven plugin right whereas with the latest versions you no need to install okay you no need to install maven plugin to your editor that's it maven plugin to your editor that's it okay this is the most important point which we need to know great so let me create a new project so the only thing is right to click or go to file go to new go to others expand the maven select maven project okay select the maven project let me switch to that particular one now so i'm going to file new and from the new i'm choosing others from here this is a maven folder basically i'm expanding maven and where in which i'm choosing maven project and click on a next i'm not changing anything i'm just leaving this configuration alone and clicking on a next button even if you observe guys whenever you are creating a new selenium project using a maven you will leave with the maven quick start only the same thing i'm leaving i'm not changing anything i'm just leaving the same thing and uh, here i would like to create i would like to create a maven project for which i need to give a group id and as well as an artifact id so the artifact id i'm giving it as a surin cucumber first for an instance and the group id i'm giving it as uh cook examples okay this is what i have a given for that so if you observe the package structure basically it's gonna create the package under this particular one it's gonna be the project name and it's gonna be the package name and this is the structure where the maven is going to create okay fine let me click on a finish button now see here surin cucumber new maven project that got a created great there is the project whatever we have a created once after i created a project give leave the basic values or leave the default values give artifact id and click on finish a button so i just created that a new maven project will be added to your editor great so we just created a new project now we need to add bunch of jar files so what exactly a jar file is you know that the entire source code we are going to compress in a jar file so that anyone having this particular jar files they can simply work on that particular project or the source code whatever they have created okay whatever the source code we have created we can use it using this particular jar files so adding a particular jar file to a project is the most important thing
okay adding a write jar files so it's not adding a jar files basically adding a write jar files is the most important thing required for us to work on a cucumber in a java project okay to work on a cucumber in a java project we need a two jar files the first one is cucumber java jar file and the second one is cucumber j unit jar file and update j unit jar file in the maven project so by default whenever we created a maven project see it comes with a pom.xml you know that pom.xml is the root for the entire maven project which contains the configuration of everything see here it is having a different different tabs i'm switching to pom.xml by default it's gonna be in a overview i'm switching to the pom.xml now where in which it has a dependencies the meaning of the dependencies is what are all the various jar files we need so by default it is having a z unit 3.8.1 which is an outdated one i need to update this j unit jar file along with I need to add the jar files of a cucumber Java and as well as a cucumber J unit. From where can we get these jar files? So to get these jar files, simply navigate to mavenrepository.com and search for above names. So here I already opened these uh, Maven repository, mvnrepository.com now i'm searching for cucumber java so here it is a cucumber java and i clicked on a search button so from the search results we need to pick a jar file basically which is okay so i'm selecting cucumber java info cubes hyphen cucumber java so there are a multiple uh, supported files are there from where we are choosing info cooks okay so fine so I just selected this particular one. So click on this particular one, which will navigate to the details of version phase. From all those versions, the latest is a 1.2.x from which the latest version Cucumbo Java is a 1.2.5. Just click on 1.2.5. Okay, I'm just clicking on this 1.2.5 where in which it is displaying the dependency code related to that just copy the dependency code and paste it under the dependency so this is the dependency i'm pasting below that or sorry so this is the dependencies i need to place it under the dependencies okay i need to place it under the dependencies this is the first one what i did so i place a cucumber java now again i need to go for cucumber j unit so search of a cucumber j unit here and again i'm selecting cucumber j unit from info cubes and i'm selecting this one and even the latest version is a 1.2.5 which i am selecting and i am copying the dependency from the maven repository and directly i'm pasting the dependency here within your dependencies so we just added these two dependencies to your project and the last one you need to do is you need to modify the j unit so go back search for j unit and i am navigating to these j unit the latest version is a 4.12 i'm selecting that i'm copying the dependency related to 4.12 and i'm pasting here once after we pasted all the three required dependencies just click on save control s see here automatically it's gonna build the workspace and if you expand these maven dependencies folder what are all the jar files we have specified it pulled all the related jar files so what are all the jar files we have specified it pulled all those related jar files so we added a cucumber java and as well as a j unit internally it pulled all these jar files to your project and kept all those files under the maven dependencies within your project itself 
So it means the only thing what we did is uh, we configured uh, this uh, pom.xml just by getting the three different uh, dependencies from Maven repository and pasting those dependencies uh, here automatically it captured the required project information all the jar files and I kept it out over here okay it captured all the project jar files and kept it out over here this is the way how exactly we can configure your eclipse editor okay this is the way how can we configure your eclipse editor and moreover i'm just making a note of all these points so at the end i will share you these running notes as well so that that will be helpful for you people to configure from your end okay so this is the basic details how to configure in the next topic we will continue and we will see the folder structure what exactly the basic folder structure which we need to follow to work on a cucumber we will study in the next topic Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. So now what we are going to study in the today's class means we are going to study about the folder structure which we need to follow inside the Maven projects. Okay. So what exactly the folder structure which we need to follow inside the Maven project is the next topic. So the basic thing what we need to do is we need to create three packages within the projects okay the first package is for feature files the second package is for step definitions and the third package is for test runner class so these are all the three different packages which we need to create inside the maven project okay we just created a new maven project right so we need to create all these stuff see here i'm closing my pom.xml under the test so here i would like to create the entire information under that test itself okay so here let me expand these src tests under java by default there is a package available inside that i'm not going to touch that particular package i'm creating a new package and i'm naming it as a features the first folder i'm naming it as a features and the next package i'm creating it as step definitions and the last package i'm creating it as a Okay, the last package I'm creating it as a cucumber options. That's it. I just created these three different packages. My entire cucumber flow is going to pass within these three packages itself. I need to write down the logics in a feature package and then I need to correlate with the step definitions and then I need to correlate with the cucumber options interrelation among these three packages we are gonna study within our classes okay so this is the basic folder structure which we need to create great usually a simple question will rise in our mind why we need to create a package for features what exactly a feature is why we need to create a package for step definition and what is a step definition is and what is a cucumber options what we are going to pass here right we created a three different packages but what are all the logics we are going to define under these three different things what is the significance of creating each and every option here which we need to know which is a mandatory thing right which is a mandatory thing which we need to know why we are creating a three different packages for the three different options and how we are going to relate those options is the basic thing cool so let me come with an example now before moving further let me give you a small example let us start with an example so why we have chosen this cucumber bdd why we have chosen this bdd so you know the simple answer for this one is we need to define everything in a simple 
understanding format for BAs, product owners, and a manual testers as well. Just by looking into that, they can understand or they should understand what exactly that scenario is going to perform. Right. What exactly that scenario is going to perform? We just just by looking into that, anyone should understand that. This is the bottom line. So where in which uh, in order to return that information in an understanding format, we need to follow some syntax or a language basically. A simple example guys. So my intention is to write down a Selenium program. So it means I need to add the plugins and I need to write down a program in such a way my Selenium can understand then only it will perform an operation. Assume that in your Selenium, your intention is to enter a value into Gmail username field, right? Then you need to write down a command in such a way that driver dot find element by dot id dot send the keys like this. You need to write down a command, or if you write a command stating that enter a value into the Gmail username field how come my selenium will know if i have written this one right we need to write down in a format where exactly our selenium can understand and it can perform operations the same way here we need to follow that particular syntax which we are calling it as a jerkins basically okay we need to use this jerkins Okay, we need to use, we need to write down the syntax specifically in a jerkins so that everyone can understand what we have written and even Kukumbo will interact with the jerkins. So in the next topic, we are going to study about what exactly a jerkin is, what are all the topics, sub keywords included related to jerkins and all those things we will study in the next lecture. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Kukumba training program. In the last class, we studied an overview about the package, the folder structure, and all those things. In the today's class, let's see about Jerkins. What exactly is Jerkins is? Why we are using that? What is the significance of this particular one? And how we are going to use this concept in our real time? Let's look into that. Jerkins basically it is a language to describe your software behavior it means means here in order to describe or define our test cases we are going to use this Jerkins under BDD so it means we are using this Jerkins as a medium to write down our test cases manual test cases into a behavior driven development. So it is a language whatever we are using in a simple terms whenever we are working on our projects. We usually got requirements from a business analyst for which manual testing team need to develop the test cases and based on the requirement the BA will understand the requirement from a customer in a different perspective and he has a written a requirement in a document by looking into that requirement tester may understand in a different perspective so ba wants that scenario in one way and tester understood that scenario in another way because of which the entire process might differ the best example for this one is see assume that we are working on an e-commerce application so in an e-commerce application, there are multiple places are there where we can perform a search operation for a particular product and user can purchase a product. So assume that uh, we are working on an Amazon. In an Amazon, we can search for a product in a home page or we can navigate to an in-detail product page. From there, we can purchase that. So here, the requirement which we got from a BA is basically perform search and purchase products. That's what he has a given.
he haven't mentioned anywhere that uh, where exactly we need to perform a search operation or from where we need to purchase a product all those details just by looking into that requirement we noticed that okay there is a requirement to perform a search operation immediately we have a return the test case to perform a search from the text field on a home page of that e-commerce application and we purchased the product in such way we have a return but this requirement is intended to select the sub menu from main menu and then purchase a product okay this is what his need is basically a ba was intended and he has a return in such a way where a tester understood and return in a such a way and the application will fail definitely the reason is these two persons are in a different different perspectives basically okay ba is assuming one thing and tester is assuming one thing see they represented everything in an english language only which is a medium for everyone but as a the PA haven't concluded the statements properly. The tester got confused and he assumed by his own and he tested or returned the test cases in another fashion. Because of which, a lot of confusion and output gonna fail. Instead of doing this one and avoiding these confusing, they are following BAs, testers, everyone are following a common syntax to avoid all these confusions. That particular syntax is we are using from this jerkins. Okay, we are using those common syntaxes from these jerkins to avoid the confusing between the testers, BAs, product owners with respect to requirements and other things. So there are some set of syntaxes which we need to follow. Then only this jerkin is gonna recognize that. And using that syntax, everyone can simply understand that particular feature or a requirement or anything. Okay, this is a brief overview about these jerkins and why. So we are going to use these uh, jerkins. So it means whatever the manual test cases are there in order to automate it using a BDD, we need to convert that a uh, manual test case into a jerkin language format basically. Okay, which we are going to see moving further with an examples in the today's class. The most important scenarios or the most important keywords which we are using out over here in Cucumber are there are five different things. One is a scenario. Another thing is a feature. The next one is a feature file. Then fourth one is a scenario outline and the next one is a step definition. So I will cover the, the four items starting from two to five, which is a feature till the step definition in the next lecture. In the today's class, I would like to explain you about what exactly a scenario is, what we are going to write in the scenarios, what are all the various keywords internally we are using, we are going to study right now. Great. So scenario in Cucumber, the general manual test cases are considered as a scenarios. Whatever the manual test cases we have, we are considering them as a scenarios in our Cucumber. Each and every scenario, whatever we are going to write down in a Cucumber contains four different steps. Given, when, then, and and a but but basically we are uh, giving this one as a least preference we can consider given when then and a end so these are all the four different steps of which we are defining in any scenario ultimately the bottom line which we need to consider here scenario means in cucumber scenario means it's just one test case whatever the manual test case we have we are considering it as a scenario in cucumber each and every scenario, we will write it using these are four keywords itself. Given, when, then, and n. These are all the four keywords which we are using. Then, what is the significance of a given? What is the significance of a when, then, and a n? Let us see an example. The given, we are going to define the set of preconditions in this particular given. Okay, we are going to define set of preconditions in a uh, given. When is used to define the user actions. What are all 
when is used to define user actions when the precondition was a happened what are all the actions we need to perform we are going to define under the when and finally in the then we are going to define a verification point seems like these are three words are getting are creating some confusing for us so let me conclude this one with a small example for now i am considering my manual test case as this is my manual test case verify gmail login functionality with valid set of credentials okay guys this is my manual test case okay this is what my manual test case is the manual test case i need to convert it into a cucumber so this manual test case is going to be a scenario so here let me write down the scenario so scenario verify gmail login with valid credentials so the manual test case we are considering at as a scenario so each and every scenario will contain given when and at then so given we noticed that it contains a preconditions see in order to verify the gmail functionality what exactly a precondition is gmail application should be open right so in the given i am defining the precondition as open the gmail home page or open the gmail login page great so this is what the precondition to verify this test case great when this home page got opened when what you need to do enter so here the user action for this particular one we need to define under a when when user action i am writing it as enter you name right password click on a login button i need to define here this is what the user action is great finally in the then what they need to perform verify logout button right so this is a verification point we need to create here under the then so in the then i am verifying verify logout button so here this is what our manual test case is we converted that manual test case into this cucumber scenario followed by given when and as well as a then notations see this is what a manual test case is the test case name i am simply giving it as a scenario name given we are defining a precondition to verify the gmail login functionality the precondition is open the gmail page then the user should enter a username password and a click on a login button then which is used to verify a logout button here we can also use and to add additional verification points so here directly after then i am adding a and here stating that in the verification what i am verifying means verify the title of the page title of the page so these two are then and n these two are a verification points here scenario given when and then this is the manual test case which we have converted into a cucumber scenario followed by a given when then and n just by looking into this one anyone can simply understand that and one more thing is whenever you are automating a particular application using a bdd majority of the cases we will have the manual test cases in a normal format only okay manual test cases we will have in a normal format only we will convert them into scenarios like above example we will convert them into scenarios like a above example that's what a automation tester you need to do this is what you need to do for a single manual test case and even earlier we have a studied one small example here which is a confusing statement created by ba let me convert this one into a scenario okay this is what a requirement from a ba the scenario what we are converting is verify product search functionality from 
sub menu okay given amazon.com should be open or open amazon.com directly i'm specifying open amazon.com when select the user action is basically select the main category and sub category here not only i need to do the selection of a category purchase the product so here i am adding n to this one finally the then i am representing as verify the payment gateway okay verify the payment gateway guys if you clearly observe in the previous scenario we specified end in a verification point and now in the current scenario we specified end in an user actions followed by a when so that completely depend on your need wherever you want you can pass this end so in the current scenario what it is going to do and it will select the main category and a sub category this end will purchase a product so just by looking into this scenario it will be cluster clear for a tester that this is going to search for a product from a sub menu or a sub category like that we are going to categorize our test cases in such a way that anyone can simply understand this stuff okay anyone can simply understand this particular stuff okay this is what a scenario is okay great done up to here so when we are working on a bdd make sure that you need to write down this particular stuff whatever the test case is there the manual test case you need to convert it in such a way and we need to write down scenario given when then and depends on our need we can add a and also like this we need to convert our test case great done up to here guys okay cool so in the next lecture so far if you clearly observe out of the five keywords we focused on a scenario in the next lecture we will study about a feature feature file and all these information a brief overview about all these information okay great that's all i have see you again in the next lecture thank you bye bye hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last lecture we studied about a simple example on gmail login functionality scenario right so in order to understand these uh, scenarios writing more clearly let me create a uh, multiple scenarios for now let's create a uh, two to three scenarios on a different different manual test cases so that we can understand this concept more clearly okay great so for now i'm just uh, creating certain manual test cases here for an instance so here manual test case so these are all the test cases which i'm writing for only gmail login functionality the scenario is one and the same i am writing the test cases for only gmail login functionality where in which the first scenario i have written with a valid credentials so the next test case which i am going to write down so here it's a serial number the second scenario which i am going to write down the second manual test case which i am going to write down is verify the login functionality with invalid username and a valid password this is going to be one test case see in the real time our test case is not going to be like this just for our understanding purpose i am simplifying this one in a different ways that's it okay the same way the third scenario i am writing down as the verifying the login functionality with a valid username and invalid password and the last one is verify login with mt credentials okay verify login with mt credentials so this is what the process so earlier we have written with the verify login with 
valid credentials we have already written these scenarios right we have already written the scenario for the first one we split that one in the last lecture basically so in the today's class i would like to write down the scenarios for these remaining three scenarios the ultimate objective of writing these scenarios is to getting familiarized with writing of a scenarios and moreover like this we are not going to write down the test cases in our real time at all just for our understanding purpose i am simplifying this one so my test case name is verify login with invalid username and a password so in the word document i am creating a new scenario verify gmail login with invalid username and a valid password this is what the scenario name is so as you all know that the scenario name it means it's going to be the test case scenario is in cucumber the test case is in a manual test case hence i have written a similar scenario name which represents my title so this scenario is going to represent the title if you have a look into this particular title login functionality with a invalid username and a password i have given a similar name so that we can understand that and again given so given is a precondition basically you know that even it is a negative scenario the precondition is open the gmail application login page right i've opened the gmail application login page which is remain one and the same when it's going to define the user action where in which enter invalid a username valid a password click on a login button okay that's it and finally then verify login page the reason is whenever you have entered an invalid credentials to any particular application we will be navigating to the same login page and i have given verify login page great so this is the second scenario which i have written okay the third test case i am converting the third test case into an another scenario here the scenario is a scenario verify gmail login with the valid uname and the invalid password again the precondition is one and the same so to simplify my effort i'm just copying the given when and then from a previous example i'm pasting out over here and to simplify this one what i am doing means serial number 1 so this is going to be the first serial number the first excel file serial number serial number 2 and this is going to be the serial number 3 so for my representation i am writing it out over here okay so here in this case open the gmail login page is a common the user action is enter valid username and invalid password even in this particular case the login action is one and the same the verification is one and the same which is verify login page this is going to be one and the same and the last serial number the scenario 4 which is the scenario name is verify gmail login with empty credentials given you know the given is one and the same open the gmail login page when just click on a login button okay just click on a login button then verify login page and the error message see for each and everything we can specify an error message also the reason is whenever we entered an invalid credentials for sure it's going to display with an error message that's what i have given here so completely for this the functionality is basically verify gmail login positive and negative cases okay so i have written gmail login positive and negative cases there are four different test cases are there four different manual test cases are there i converted those four different manual test cases into four different scenarios here that's it like this we can convert a test case into a scenario and i am adding a one more scenario here this is the last scenario which i would like to add so the last scenario is it's a different application basically order a products 
from amazon.com so other order a particular product from an amazon.com this is what the last scenario which i would like to write for an examples of scenario so here the scenario is ordering a product in amazon.com so this is what the scenario is and then given what we need to in a given which is a precondition in order to op order a particular product in any amazon or any e-commerce application open the application amazon.com open the application first once after we open the application when user search for a product okay user search for a product in order to purchase a product basically we need to add it to cart and click on purchase button see here this is what my first condition is and the another condition out over here again i am adding an and and i am defining the next condition verify payment page and proceed with a payment <laughs> done so this is the second scenario that's the reason depending on my requirement i can add a multiple ends here finally the verification point order confirmation page so here verify order confirmation page this is what the last scenario or the last verification point is okay this is what the last verification point is that's it so this is the thing guys serial number and this is the thing okay great done up to here guys okay this is how we can write down a scenarios in the real time so we need to understand the test case and we need to split that into the different different kinds of scenarios and in the current example if you observe we added a multiple ends here depending on our requirement so depending on our requirement to verify positive validations we will add an end and in order to verify the negative validations we will add a but we will see the example of a but moving further with a small examples okay this is what a scenario is once after we are done with the scenarios right away a simple question will rise in our mind how come these scenarios will execute how come these scenarios will execute right one second how come these scenarios will execute this is what the most important thing is okay so let us see with an example now i would like to continue uh, how we are going to execute this one in the next video guys okay i will clearly explain about this concept in the next session thank you bye bye hi everyone welcome to kumbha training program in the last class we studied about the various kinds of scenarios the creation for every manual test case that's what we have studied in the last class in continuation with that i would like to explain about how can we convert these scenarios into a real execution flow that's what the next step which we need to go before moving further i just want to study about the keywords in a day before yesterday's class we studied about a keywords from all those things so far we studied just about the scenarios now let's focus on the feature and as well as a feature file first and then we will move further okay feature and as well as a feature file so what exactly a feature is it's a high level business requirement so as for the yesterday's class the high level business requirement is a verify login functionality so for that my feature is going to be feature verify login functionality this is what my feature is within a feature we can add n number of scenarios like how many scenarios we want we can add those many scenarios within the feature file scenario 2 scenario 3 see each and every scenario will have a given when and then like yesterday so here 
a single feature file can contains of a multiple scenarios depending on that particular business requirement okay depending on that particular business requirement we will add a number of scenarios to a particular feature file ultimately a file so in a simple terms what we can do means we will create a file within the project where we will give an extension as dot feature in that file we will write down all our scenarios which are given when and then so we will write down the test cases so scenarios means the test cases let me make a note we will write down the test cases in a given when and as well as a then format like this we are going to create that particular information the whole thing we can call it as a feature file depending on the project need okay depending on a project need we will create n number of a feature files within a single project where a single feature file contains multiple scenarios okay a single feature file contains a multiple scenarios that's it this is the high level about a scenarios and as well as a feature and moreover the last one is a feature file what exactly a feature file means this one acts like a test suit which comprises of all the scenarios so a single class which we can consider as a feature file a single dot extension of a feature we can call it as a feature file almost the feature and the feature file are comprising the similar things here so this is an overview of this particular feature file great so what i am doing means for an instance the last scenario i am copying okay the last scenario followed by so let me paste it here at the bottom this is the last scenario whatever we have created let me copy that locked scenario and here is a simple question see usually guys as i am conveying that we are preparing automation test scripts right where you are using this cucumber framework here where in which we are creating test cases as a scenarios great if your application contains 100 test cases we are going to create 100 scenarios which were following by given when and and then so usually a simple question will rise in our mind the thing is within a feature file right within a feature file we are creating scenarios in which we are following jerkin syntax and writing a simple plain english format plain simple english format how come those english words will perform operations right this kind of a simple question usually will rise in our mind see in the above scenario the given is open the amazon.com how it is opening the amazon.com where we are writing down that particular logics which is the most important thing right where we are writing down the logics out over here and user search a product where user is searching a product as of now we are writing an information but where is the logic implemented in selenium for these actions where exactly the logic implemented for these actions so ultimately in order to perform this particular one we need to create a step definitions okay we need to create a step definitions so it means given we are considering one step when we are considering one step and then these individual things we are considering as a step 
and the step definition definition means for each and every step defined in the feature file we need to write corresponding logic which will perform the required operations on the browser using selenium tool okay using a selenium tool so it means we need to define that particular feature for that particular feature step we need to define the step definitions which is the most most important thing okay a step definition logic is the most important thing what is a step definition means each and every line present in a feature file we can consider them as a steps so we need to create a step definition class in which you need to write down the logics for each and every step defined in a feature file in selenium programs so that it will execute great immediately a simple question will rise in our mind so we are going to create feature files in a separate folder and we are going to create step definitions in another package basically then how come they will correlate right how come they will correlate the reason is basically these two are in a different different places how the correlation between the feature file and as well as a step definition will happen a simple example here guys in my mobile i'm using okay in my mobile i'm using atel and vodafone two networks basically when i clicked on call from the first sim okay when i click on a call from the first sim atel is going to be the first sim okay and a vodafone it's going to be from the in the second sim okay atel is going to be the first sim and vodafone is going to be the second sim so when i click on a call from the first sim automatically it will try to establish the connection from the atel as it was already configured in the back end right so the simple point is that action was already defined whenever you click on a sim 1 go to the network atel and connect from there we have already established that particular relation so the same way using jerkins there was a, a relation established between okay there was a relation established between feature file and the step definition okay the feature file and as well as the step definition the feature file will look for that particular step definition automatically okay the feature file will look for the step definition automatically okay great this is the back end logic so how this process is going to flow we will continue this topic in the next class with an example okay i just want to show you a small example so if you remember guys couple of classes before we created a project in eclipse right we created a project in an eclipse and we created so we created a maven projects for which we added all the jar files and even the folder structure also right we added everything so i just want to consider that as an example and i would like to write down my test cases here okay fine then so this is the basic thing we'll continue the topic in the next session thank you very much bye bye hello hi everyone welcome to kukumba training program 
in the last class uh, we studied about what is a feature scenarios and all those things with a theoretical concepts wherein which we have written them in a word document now i would like to consider these uh, four as the next and uh, most important concepts which we are going to study so we have already created a project in an eclipse editor within that particular project i need to create a feature file scenarios step definitions and test run up so far i know what exactly a feature file is what exactly a scenario is but i don't know what exactly a step definition and a test run up so slowly moving further we will study about all these things so let me start with the first two options ana so how can we create a feature file and how can we create a scenarios within an eclipse editor for which i am opening my eclipse editor and if you remember we have already created a framework which is a suren kukumbo in the last week and in that i am navigating to src test where in which we created a three different sub packages inside that let me navigate inside that it contains the multiple packages inside that right so the package out over here is features step definitions and the cucumber options right these are all the three things so let's start with a feature so here the simple point here is a feature so within a project under a feature we are going to create our feature files which internally contains scenarios inside that okay so which internally contains the scenarios inside that this is what you need to create but only thumb roll what we need to do is a name followed by dot feature extension we need to create when we are creating a feature file so here under the features i'm creating a new file i'm creating a new file i'm not creating any java class here new file and i am naming it as login page dot feature so i'm using this a dot a feature extension for every feature and click on a finish see if you observe the file whatever it's going to create it's a follows a different color annotation basically whenever this a feature file got a created see here this is how it's going to display okay this is how it's going to display so this is the feature file okay whatever the feature file we have are created this is how the feature file will looks like okay this is how the feature file will looks like great we created a feature file by default it is throwing some into my the reason the reason is basically this feature file should contain below things what are all the below things the first one is the feature high level business requirement name followed by scenario which scenario we are going to test followed by given where in which in the given we are going to define the pre conditions when what are all the user actions then verifications so these are all the three things or these are all the things where a feature file should contain a feature the scenario name given when and a then so i'm not going to write anything new here in the last lecture we created a multiple feature files right sorry a multiple scenarios for a single functionality so i would like to consider that so here the manual test case is a verify gmail login functionality with the valid and invalid credentials where in which we created a four different scenarios so i am considering that as an example feature and i am naming this particular feature as gmail login functionality 
So I'm giving this a feature name as a Gmail login functionality. See here, feature is a keyword and I need to specify the column immediately to that. If at all I'm specifying the space, the feature is not recognizing as a keyword by this file. So whenever I'm defining a feature immediately, a column, it is recognizing this as a keyword. Followed by a feature, we need to define a scenario. And the scenario is, let me open the Word document for the first scenario. The scenario is verify Gmail login with the valid credentials. Let me write down the same. Verify Gmail login with valid credentials. Okay, verify Gmail login with the valid credentials. Great guys. So we have a specified uh, this particular one. Once we are done with the scenario, the next thing which we need to give for any scenario is given when and then. We studied that a given is a precondition. So here, given, okay, given, open Gmail application homepage. Open Gmail application homepage. Okay, great. This is a given. When what it needs to happen, the user. What is the when in that car in that scenario? The user action is enter username, password, and click on a login button. Enter valid username, password, and click on login button. That's it. And finally, the then it has. Okay, the then, what is the then we have in that scenario document? Verify logout button. Go back to the editor, verify logout button. Guys, if you clearly observe, it is recognizing all these things as a keywords here. If you clearly observe, it is recognizing them as a keywords. Okay, one most important thing is basically feature and the scenarios, everything should be recognized like this keywords only. Then only we can understand that or our Eclipse can recognize that or our Cucumber can recognize them. Okay, uh, our Cucumber can recognize them whenever we are following in this notation. So this is the first scenario and we have another scenario. The scenario, another scenario which we have is a verify Gmail login with invalid username and a valid password right like that we have a four different scenarios the another scenario which we have created in that award document is verify gmail login with a valid username and an invalid password the next scenario what we have created is a verify gmail login with empty credentials Right, so these are all the scenarios we have a created for each and every scenario. There is a given when and a then. I'm copying uh, the given when and a then and I'm pasting here for our better readability. That's it. Okay, so given open the Gmail login page, enter invalid username and a valid password and click on a login button. Verify here. It should display the login page again as we have entered invalid credentials, right? So I'm just customizing this. Okay, I'm just customizing this and a valid username and an invalid password. So here, if you observe the simple thing, what I did means in the last lecture, what are the scenarios I created in a board document? I just created all those four scenarios here within an Eclipse editor under a login feature. But for each and every given when and a then, if you remember, we consider all these things as a steps. We studied that everything should be considered as a steps for each and every step. Some kind of a warning message is getting displayed. All the steps in the entire program, it is displaying as a warning messages. Whenever we mouse over on that, no definition found for this. So it means you have a created a step. It means you have already created a logic or else. So let me uh, scroll down and let me make a point out over here. The warning message 
in the feature file is representing that you have a created a step but it is a stating that there is a no step definition for that it means it doesn't find any back end logic for that step so the most important thing in this cucumber bdd is for every step whatever we have created we need to write down logics for each and every step we need to write down the logics for each and every steps which we can call it as a step definition which we are calling them as a step definition great which we are calling them as a step definition which we are going to cover as part of the next lecture the step definition generation we are going to cover as part of the next lecture but the warning message it is stating as you created a file that's fine you created individual steps inside that but there is a no logic found for that particular one that's the reason it is throwing warning messages and i don't want all these scenarios guys i just want to work on only one scenario i just just want to comment all these things so here hash is the keyword hash is the command which you need to use in order to comment something in a feature file okay so i'm just commenting these scenarios i don't want all these scenarios in this feature file i commented everything my feature file contains only one scenario here this is what the scenario is okay great so we have a defined the steps here the next thing is we need to define the logic somewhere for this particular steps so how we are going to define that we will see in the next lecture thank you bye bye hello hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last class uh, we created uh, the feature file in an eclipse editor in which we created a step definitions for that sorry we created a scenarios in that right so now i would like to create a step definition see the first and the most important thing what we need to do is if we need to create a step definition there are two different ways in order to create a step definition okay the two different ways are just by running test runner class eclipse will generate step definitions this is the first point and the second point is a chrome browser plugin these are the two different ways how can we generate a step definition file so let us start with the first option so in order to go for this first option the most important thing which we need to know is how can we configure test runner class for this cucumber okay how can we configure this test runner class for this cucumber is the most important thing which we need to do okay great so let us start with this particular one we have already created a package okay we have already created a package which is a cucumber options within our framework within this cucumber options we are going to create a test runner class so what is the significance of the test runner class this test runner class will contains what are all the files it needs to execute where exactly the step definition is and all those things so here i'm creating a new java class and i'm naming it as test runner i'm not writing any logics i just created this test runner class inside this test runner we need to specify two values the first value is okay the first value is feature file location and the second value is step definition location that's it so these are all the 
two different values of which we need to pass for this test on our class the reason is it needs to pick the feature files and from the feature files for every feature file step there we need to define a step for sure you need to specify the step definition so here directly i can specify the folder locations for both of these in two different commands we need to write down a two different commands to specify this information okay we need to specify two different commands in order to do this particular one okay great so what are all the two different commands and how we need to use that let me copy this structure first of all from my previous test script so that i can explain it more clearly so i just copied this structure and now here we need to add at the rate runs with the cucumber class okay it's going to runs with a cucumber class and the cucumber options we are specifying are the first one is a feature file and the second one is a step definitions so let me mouse over on a runs with and import a j unit runner here guys one small thing which you need to remember is a we are using j unit plus cucumber here okay and then let me mouse over on the cucumber options and import a cucumber options to this current class i just imported these cucumber related packages here and here features so i would like to specify the feature file location so guys if you clearly observe it is under src test java and the feature files are inside a features package so here src test java and as well as a features i specified the feature files location whereas this location so whenever we specified up to folder location whenever we specify up to folder location if there are 20 feature files inside that it will execute one after another okay it will execute one after another for suppose i don't want to execute all the feature files i just want to execute only one then specify the file name followed by folder location okay specify the file name followed by a folder location so my file name is a login page dot feature so i'm copying the file name i'm specifying a slash slash login page dot a feature okay i just specified the complete folder location for this feature file and the step definition one thumb rule which we need to follow is okay one thumb rule which we need to follow is feature file folder and step definition folder should be under a same root so that we no need to specify again the folder location for step definitions just we can pass only the package name which contains the step definitions okay cool i just specified my package name as a step definitions i just specified that as of now okay as of now one small point which we need to remember is as of now in the current scenario there is a nothing inside the step definitions but anyways we need to pass that location as an input great that's it i just created a test runner finally with these options let me look into my test runner once again guys so this test runner contains at the rate runs with the cucumber j unit option always the framework whatever we are creating will work with j unit only 
okay so that's the reason the test runner we are creating with a j unit test runner and the cucumber options we are specifying the feature file location if you would like to execute a specific file just to specify the file name you also specify the features of folder automatically it will execute all the features are present in that particular location and the step definition just to specify the step definition name which is more than enough the reason is the step definitions and as well as the features are under the same root we know need to specify anything great i have a defined of these things let me run my script run so i am running my test runner i am not running anything right to click on a test runner run as a, a j unit test i am running my test runner i am running my test runner so here the script got executed successfully the j unit script got executed successfully if you observe the console it is returning as one scenario yes of course my feature file contains only one scenario and it contains a three steps let me cross check whether the my feature file contains the same thing or not i am opening my feature file if you study this it contains only one scenario out of a four scenarios we commented the three different scenarios and the three different steps are given when and then that's it it's displaying here in the console in the console it is stating that one scenario is there that's correct which in the feature file there is only one scenario there are three steps and moreover the three steps are unimplemented steps and here you can implement the missing steps with this snippet below so it is stating that the ultimate point of what we need to consider out over here in order to generate a step definition is we have a created our feature file and we don't know how to create a step definition right how to create a step definition file and it's a syntaxes right i don't know how to create a step definition file and it's a syntaxes so i just created a test runner class in which i specified the feature file for which i haven't written step definition and i executed that test runner class in the console it will display a message stating that it will display a message stating that there were no logics found for your feature step use below code snippet to generate the logics so it means it is giving us a syntax to write down the step definition logics okay the step definition logics that's it so this is what the syntax it is displaying so given it should display in this way when it should display in this way then it should display in this particular way great so now what i am doing right now means under the step definitions package let me create a new class and i am naming it as login page so i am defining this one as a login page and inside that whatever the console it generated i am copying these three lines or these three methods from the console and i am pasting that logic inside the class name i just pasted that logic inside the class name from them i am removing the exceptions so it is throwing some exceptions i am deleting the exception code i just deleted that but for given when and then it is still throwing an error message just a mouse over on that it is displaying as an import a cucumber again import a when cucumber again import a then cucumber i just added all these import statements and now here system dot out dot println pre condition defined in given i am writing down so here uh user actions defined in where we have a defined when right so when and here verifications verifications 
defined in then that's it i have returned a basic logic here i'm not writing down any super logic here i have written just a basic logic here which will generate the step definitions and other stuff and right now if you go back to the login feature still it is throwing a warning message we have already written the step definition but it is throwing a warning message press control from your keyboard and a mouse over on the given it is displaying as a link the meaning is the step definition was already implemented whenever the step definition was implemented for a step whenever the step definition was implemented for any step in the feature file then if we press control from the keyboard and if we mouse over on that step it will display as a link and when we click on that link it will navigate to the step definition okay it will navigate to that particular step definition that's it so this is a simple point okay this is a simple point how we need to handle this right and still i can see these warning messages to remove those warning messages the only thing is close all the tabs and refresh your project once and open that feature file again it doesn't display those warning messages now the reason is we have already implemented those steps it should reflect it will take some time to reflect that information that's the reason it haven't reflected earlier but for each and everything we have already returned this step definitions so this is the way how can we create a step definition from the test runner class which is a first option okay how can we create a step definition from the test runner class which is the first option we have already studied just now okay cool in the next class we will see how to generate a step definition from a chrome plugin thank you very much bye bye hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last class we created a simple feature file followed by a step definition in that step definition we have a written just a normal system dot out dot print ln commands inside that so today what i would like to do means i just want to write down a selenium program inside the step definitions okay i would like to write down a selenium program inside the step definition the scenario which i would like to take out over here is login into salesforce application this is the scenario which i would like to consider to write down my program okay so prior that the steps what we need to consider out over here are the first step is check out whether this maven project is configured with selenium java drivers or not download and place the browser exe files within the project under drivers folder see these two are the most important things required for us to work on selenium on any kind of a project so this is the selenium configuration which we are adding to our project so if you have any doubts related to selenium configuration and other things we have a bunch of videos related to selenium web driver kindly look into them okay kindly look into them once before okay to configure the web driver and all those things so i am not explaining all those things directly i am jumping on so what i would like to do right now means i would like to navigate to mavenrepository.com as usual so from this maven repository i just want to add selenium java i just want to search for selenium java 
and from the search results i'm picking on a first link and from these many versions i'm picking 3.5.1 and the dependency related to 3.5.1 i am updating in our current project here when you save this it will take a few minutes time to download all the selenium related dependencies to the current maven project there is a simple thing which we need to do and here explicitly what i did means suryan kukumba is my project from the existing projects directly i pasted the drivers of folder here inside that it contains a chrome driver exe file and a jeco driver exe which is going to be a firefox browser a chrome as well as a firefox browser exe files are have separated here so when we refresh this selenium cucumber or else suryan cucumber folder you can find these drivers of folder inside that and under the maven dependencies all the selenium related dependencies got added so these two are the first and the most important things which we people need to follow okay these two are the first and the most important things which we need to follow okay great so the another point out over here is okay that's fine so once we are done up to here okay once after we have a downloaded these things and once after we have a specified these things the next point is create a feature file for this login into salesforce scenario great let me switch back to my eclipse editor under the features i'm creating a new file with a name as sf login page dot feature so i just wanna create a feature file related to salesforce login hence i am defining it as an sf login dot a feature and i click on a finish button great usually the feature file will start with a feature keyword and the name is salesforce login sf means it's a salesforce itself okay scenario the scenario which i would like to create out over here is verify login functionality i just want to verify the login functionality given which we are going to define the preconditions here where in which accessing salesforce application when user enters username password and click on a login button then verify log out button that's it so this is the simplest thing guys so i just created this particular stuff okay and okay the feature file got a created where in which we are asking it to log in into a salesforce application so i need to write down the step definition for this right we need to write down the step definition step definition for that we have a three different ways we can write down the step definition by our own we can write down the step definition by a chrome plugin and by eclipse editor in the current scenario what i would like to do means i just want to generate using a chrome plugin hence i am selecting this a teddy jerkin and now whatever the scenario is there copy the whole thing from your eclipse editor go back to teddy jerkin and place it out over here change it to java steps so here corresponding java steps will be converted right among all these i can copy these three things given when and as well as then go back here i can create a new step definition class so here sf for login page and in which i'm placing these things okay let us import these things import 
I just imported the required components here. Great guys. So we specified up to here. Then the next point of what we people need to consider out over here is given when and then. Now my intention is now we need to write selenium commands where we need to write down inside given when and then only as we have already configured a selenium directly we can use that great so directly we can use this particular selenium as it was already configured okay so how we are going to handle this particular one you know in order to launch a particular browser see accessing salesforce application so it means here we need to write down a code right here under the given we need to write down a code which will launch the browser open the application generally in order to launch a browser in selenium there are some piece of a code okay so what i'm doing means from an existing script i'm copying that a piece of a code okay so i'm copying that a piece of code and i'm pasting here i'm adding a comment below two lines of a code will launch a browser and that too will launch a chrome browser okay so let me paste it here so it's going to launch a chrome browser so system not set property webdriver dot chrome driver webdriver space driver is equal to new chrome driver okay so if you don't have uh, any idea about these uh, selenium kindly watch the selenium videos uh, in the below sections get get familiarized with the selenium concepts and then move further here okay great i just uh, specified uh, here after this one i need to open an application right uh, so here below command will open an application on the above browser we are using a driver dot get a command to open the application and the application url i need to pass here www dot login dot salesforce dot com so i have a specified a login dot salesforce dot com i just specified if you have a, any doubts open the salesforce application copy the url go back here update the url great see okay i just defined here in the given as per the requirement i opened the salesforce application so this is the logic which will launch a browser first and which will open an application next and now we need to enter the username and a password as the browser was already launched we need to enter the username and a password generally in order to enter the username and a password okay we need to know where exactly we want to enter which we can call it as an object identification okay which we can call it as an object identification and moreover in detail about object identification again you need to watch in web driver only see the points which i am adding out over here is assuming that your people have an idea on selenium and i am continuing these topics and one more advantage whatever we have a given is if you don't have a, any idea on selenium we, we have already added bunch of selenium videos to this curriculum so you can watch the selenium videos and then you can relate these contents okay you people can relate uh, this particular stuff among yourself okay just by watching the selenium web driver videos so if you are not good at selenium one suggestion is finish the selenium web driver up to 15 lectures and then jump on to this cucumber 
and selenium integration okay this is the most important thing which you people need to know great i just created this basic configuration and now the next point is i need to enter a value so driver dot so here the simple point is driver means we are launching a browser instance let me declare this one globally so that i can access this driver throughout my script driver dot i need to use a find element by dot id so i need to use a by dot id let me check out the properties here right click on a username inspect so this field is having a id property as a username copy it go back here paste it here dot send the keys i would like to enter my username here so this is a dynamic user id which i have created and now driver dot find element by dot id again and let me identify the password here so it is an id again go back here dot send keys I have a given some dynamic password here. Okay, I have a given some dynamic password here. And I need to click on a login button now. So, right click on a login button, inspect element, it is having an ID button. So, driver dot find element by dot ID. So, here I need to pass this ID property. And I would like to perform a click operation on that. After that, thread dot to sleep for some time. I just want to wait for some time. So here, as for the requirement, it is entering the username, it is entering the password, and it is clicking on a login button. Once after it clicked on a login button, finally it needs to verify the logout link. Let me log in into this application once to check out uh, how the login button looks like. So uh, let me log in into the app. Now, logout button is getting displayed. Right click on a logout, inspect element with a firebug. So logout is uh, having a linker text copied. Go back uh, here. Driver dot uh, find element uh, by dot link text. So in order to verify whether something is displayed in a web page or not, we are using a is displayed method in Selenium, which will return, okay, which will return whether it got a displayed or not, a boolean value. So I stored a boolean if obj info. If this value is a true, system not out dot print ln logout link got displayed successfully logged in. Okay, the same way else. If this condition got a fail, then logout link not displayed and here login failed. That's it. I have written this. So for the existing logics, I converted this whole thing. Okay, great. Now, once after we are done with the script, let's move on to the test runner and see. So in the test runner, whatever the feature file you would like to execute, I need to change that a feature file. So my feature file is SF login dot a feature. So I'm copying these feature files name and I'm specifying the name see guys if at all I'm removing this name and directly specifying the features of folder means it will execute all the feature files are present in that folder I don't want to execute all the files my intention is to execute only as a login that's it now let me run my test script this should launch a browser this should open an application and then it should perform the operation see okay 
it entered the username it entered the password it clicked on a login button and the verify some another page is displaying here right some page is displaying and it is getting passed whereas here it is displaying that the code snippet is missing for this one somehow it is not recognizing the code snippet for logout feature why let us look into that probably the spaces might cause some issues here okay let me delete all these unnecessary spaces here from this file yes okay okay it is recognizing now because of spaces see guys uh, the ultimate point out over here is whenever we are trying to log in into a salesforce application due to some security issues always it will trigger a verification code to the register email id you need to copy that uh, uh, verification code which was a uh, trigger to that email id and then we need to place it out over here so i don't want to verify such things so directly i'm verifying this uh, verify button whether we have a verify button displayed or not i would like to verify that okay so here we have a id as a save property so copy this go back here i'm specifying i'm changing this one as instead of a link text by id and this is what i displayed and here if that one was a not displayed it should display as a failure also fail login fail okay fail login fail so here the fail actually we need to insert okay actually we need to insert assert a command based on that automatically it will fail as this is a j unit we have certain annotations available in j unit which we can consider as a failures so i will show you how to add those failures as well fine uh, we will study about these assertions are moving further but this is what i just want to verify now let me run my test runner class again and see how this is going to work it's getting executed and it entered the credentials it clicked on a login button it verifies this one and in the console logout link displayed successfully logged in okay so it got executed successfully so this is the way if you clearly observe for the normal feature file we have integrated the selenium program okay for the normal feature file we have integrated the selenium program this is the best example for that okay cool so in the next lecture we will study how to create a reusable methods so you know that uh, working on automation testing the reusability is the most important factor so how we are going to convert this as a for login into a reusable code we will see moving further with an example that's all i have for the today's class see you again in the next lecture thank you bye bye hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last class uh, we created a step definition for a selenium test script so in the today's class i would like to give you a brief overview how can we interact with a mobile automation apm tool so the initial prerequisites what exactly you people need to do is you need to configure android studio or android sdk in your machine that's the first point and if you have uh, any real device just uh, connect it or you can work on android virtual devices
okay android virtual devices so in my current scenario i have already configured apm in my machine and i just want to execute on my android virtual device that's the reason i have opened my android virtual devices which we can call it as an emulator and i have already started my apm server so if you don't know what exactly the configuration you people need to do for apm as we have a separate section for apm kindly go over there watch the videos complete the configuration and come back here okay this is what uh, a, a relation basically which you need to follow uh, before moving ahead now uh, what i am trying to do means uh, so here i would like to create a new step or a new feature file my intention is handle switch android ui so android ui is an application where in which i would like to handle the switch i just uh, created a file so feature right okay so i forgot to add a dot feature out over there i think right i forgot to add the dot feature i don't want this one let me recreate a dot feature file so new file dot feature great now feature so my feature is verifying switch in android ui app so it means let me show you the scenario what my script needs to do it needs to launch this android ui application and uh, here okay so uh, there is a drop down right uh, so let us directly handle the drop down so rather than going for multiple scenarios i just want to handle this drop down in the country drop down it should pick one value from there great i have a defined this a feature and i am defining my scenario as verifying a drop down functionality so this is not the switch so i am renaming it as a drop down so here also let me change the feature file name to avoid a confusing so drop down i am giving a keyword dd as a drop down for my understanding so next given okay so given so what i am defining under the given uh, uh set desired capabilities in mobile automation testing the desired capabilities setting is the most important part hence i am setting the desired capabilities the first when okay in the when select the drop down and select desired value then close the application close the mobile application these are all the three steps i am copying these steps and i am placing them in a uh, teddy jerkin to generate the step definitions okay i got my three different steps here let me copy those step definitions go back to eclipse editor i am creating a new class here handling switch sorry handling drop down okay drop down and uh, here i am placing this import a given when and then okay so how to write down mobile automation logic so we are not going to study how exactly we are going to write down the mobile automation testing logic here as we have a separate module which discuss completely about mobile automation testing i am not explaining that stuff here for the reference i am opening the mobile automation test script or whatever we have okay whatever the mobile automation test script we have i'm opening that particular test script so here if you observe the comment up to here above code is a copied from previous program so this a whole thing this a whole thing is a common for every program this we can call it as a desired capabilities so i'm copying this logic okay i'm copying this piece of logic and i am pasting here in the given okay and the driver declaration i just want to use it for all the methods so i am defining that a driver declaration here which will be applicable for everything and then here is the desired logic to select a value from a drop down i am copying this logic from here and i am pasting it in when 
and finally in the last one the termination of the mobile application i have a specified that here guys if you clearly observe i'm not writing anything new here whatever the apm concepts that we have i'm just reusing that code here i copied that code and i pasted that code here nothing more than that i haven't did anything new here so let me cross check whether these step definitions are recognizing great so let me get my feature file and name so handling of a drop down dot a feature copy this file name go back to the test runner and let me change this one and just run the script so i'm just executing my test script in my eclipse editor somehow it got a fail let's see what exactly the issue behind the failure is so let me maximize the console and see where it is getting failed so selenium web driver exception the original error is there is a no act to simulator with zoes 4.4.2 okay i did a mistake in my test script so here okay let me go back so this is pointing to this 4.4.2 version okay this is not the 4.4.2 version even i didn't remember that version at all let me launch the android studio to check that particular version or uh, one second i have one small program where in which uh, i have that version it's an android 7.0 the error message is related to android version so i'm changing this version to android 7.0 and now let me run my program so these kind of an error messages and the solutions for these error messages you can study in a mobile automation testing apm directly you people can study out there okay exit let me keep my device on here so that i can see what exactly the script it is getting executed on that particular device okay it should launch the app and it should select the desired value and it should terminate that particular app as well okay these are the steps which my script should perform see the app the android settings was launched and then uh, it should relaunch the app and then it should so it closed the existing app and it's going to relaunch that app and it should select a value so the point out over here is how we are integrating means inside the step definition only under the given and when and then we need to specify the desired logic whether it's going to be either selenium logic or apm logic so that this cucumber will execute either selenium or apm that's it so in the previous script it executed the selenium commands and this script it executed the apm commands inside the given whatever the commands you have a specify it will execute those particular commands only that's it great now up to here we will continue the next topic with a further examples but one small thing is without knowing mobile automation testing this is bit difficult so if you don't have any idea on a mobile automation testing we have a separate section within the course curriculum for mobile automation as well just have a look into there study the mobile automation and implement out over here in a cucumber so the bottom line is the structure is one and the same in a given when and then you need to write down the mobile automation logic if you want to implement cucumber on apm if you want to implement cucumber on selenium under the given when and then you need to write down your selenium logic that's what the bottom line is great we'll continue the next topic in the next session with the further more examples thank you bye bye hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last class we studied about how to create a step definitions from the test runner class and in the today's class i would like to show you how to create a step definitions from the chrome browser plugin so before moving further what i am doing means whatever the step definitions we have already added in the last class i am commenting them so i don't want to use that logic at all hence i am commenting or simply i can delete that one for an instance now i don't want to use all of them for now hence i have a deleted them okay so the only thing is we just created a class for the step definitions that's it there is a no logic inside that now i need to generate a logic for that how can we generate that so it is stating that a chrome browser plugin 
there is a plugin available in a Chrome browser specifically for Cucumber. There is a plugin. I'm making a note in Chrome browser for Cucumber to generate step definitions for any feature file. So step definition syntaxes. It's not going to generate the step definitions. It's going to generate a syntaxes. Okay, it's going to generate the syntaxes for these step definitions. Okay, cool. So how this is going to work? Let me open my Chrome browser before moving further. So I just opened my Google in the Chrome browser and I am typing it as Okay, Teddy Jerkin for Chrome browser. Okay, Teddy Jerkin for the Chrome browser. So I am selecting this the first plugin, Teddy Jerkin. Okay, and uh, it is navigating to this particular page, and I am clicking on Teddy Jerkin. Okay, this is the plugin basically. I am clicking on Add to Chrome. I just selected that and I am clicking on an add app. So automatically it's going to add this plugin to your Chrome browser. Just click on this plugin. So this is how it generated. So here if you observe the first line is enter your jerkin here. The meaning is whatever the feature file logic is there copy it and paste it here. As we are using a Java program, select these Java steps here. Automatically, this plugin will prompt that particular logic here. Okay, so for our better understanding, let me switch to the Eclipse editor, copy the scenario from the feature file, paste it under this here, and select the Java steps. Automatically, if you observe, corresponding logic was generated by this jerkin. So the given when and the then was already generated. So I'm just copying the given when and then from here. Go back to your editor and just paste the given when then here. Like earlier, import the given from Cucumber, import a when from Cucumber, import then from Cucumber, delete the exceptions from given when and then. Okay, delete the exceptions from given when and then. So here again, I am writing it as a system dot out dot print ln given in a simple terms. I just I'm just writing it as a given. Okay, when and then. So in place of a given when and then we need to write down our Selenium logic, which will open the application. So it means uh, here it should fall driver the get. Okay, driver dot get HTTP www.gmail.com we need to pass this particular logic here and here enter the valid user id means driver dot find element by dot id we need to pass the id for the username send the keys you name we need to pass the you name here like the same way we need to pass for password and we need to write down a selenium command which will click on a login button like this, we need to write down the Selenium logics. For now, I'm showing you how to generate the syntax for this step definition. That's it. And here we need to write down the Selenium code for verification of a login success. Like that, we need to split it among ourselves. Okay, we need to split this logic among ourselves. This is how we can generate that. This, this is the most simplest option guys. We need to write down the feature file, copy the content from the feature file, paste it here, select the Java steps. Automatically the step definition is generated. Just copy the logic from here, paste it in this step definition page. Just write down whatever we want. Just write down whatever we want. That's it. Nothing more than that here, which you need to do. There is nothing complicated here. Okay. This is the way how can we generate using the plugin. And now what I'm trying to do means let me uncomment the second scenario and uncomment the given for the second scenario. I have uncommented only one line or else and I have uncommented the when also. Now the given if you clearly observe it is not throwing any warning messages related to the given in this scenario. The reason is the given whatever we have given in a first scenario and the second scenario is one and the same 
and your feature is recognizing that particular logic that's the reason it is not throwing any warning messages here whereas for this when there is a no logic we need to write down the logic for this one so forgot about this given i would like to write down the logic for when so i want to write down manually i don't want to write down using uh, uh, using an eclipse editor test runner class which is generating a customized one i don't want to use that even i don't want to use the teddy jerkin even i need to know how to write down the logic right uh, switch back here let me comment this when here and i am writing it as at the rate of when open braces double quotes so this one will start with a cap colon and this one will ends with a dollar cap a dollar and ends with a dollar so the name here which we need to pass under the when should be same as the name whatever we have here these two names are one and the same then only it will recognize that so whatever the name we have entered in a when just copy it and paste it here the name whatever we have entered in a when and this name should be one and the same that's the reason i have entered i just copied and pasted out over here the only syntax is cap colon and end with a dollar that's it cap colon and end with a dollar and now what i am going to do right now i would like to write down a method so public void the name should be anything invalid username gmail login so i have a given some name here which is not a valid thing we can give any name it's not mandatory that we need to give the same step name we can give any name here system dot uh, okay so let me write down here system dot out dot print ln when for invalid username and a valid password that's it this is a simple thing guys if you clearly observe the only thing what we did means basically we have a written our own when to cross check go back to the second scenario press a control mouse over on that particular okay mouse over on that particular step definition okay of course still it is not recognizing that why so why it is not recognizing let me see this why it is not recognizing no definition found so we have already given this a definition right we have already given this a definition okay there is a space here okay see here the reason why it was not recognized is earlier in the when there is a space here whereas the when whatever we have written it doesn't have any space that's the reason it doesn't recognize so i removed the space from my when automatically it is recognizing the logic whatever we have written automatically it is recognizing the logic so here whatever the spaces we are considering even space will play a major role here so be careful when we are writing the feature file steps and their step definitions great so this is the thing guys and even for suppose the next scenario has uh, enter valid username and an invalid password right i am deleting the space first and i am copying this name let me write down see when you are working on your projects you should be familiarized with everything you you, uh, you don't have an option in a chrome browser then you need to write down by your own that's the reason i am showing this option at the rate of when i know the syntax is a double quotes cap colon and with a dollar place this name that's it and here public void the name i am giving it as invalid passwords gmail login so see for now i am considering as a dynamic stuff invalid password but working on our projects we need to give a valid naming convention so if you go back here this time when you mouse over on that it is recognizing this logic whatever we have returned like that so 
like this we can write down our customized logics or customized step definitions also i don't want to use them i just commented this particular stuff okay i just commented this particular stuff great this is the thing and it is the throwing and warning message related to uh, which one the verify logout button let us see the verify logout button is there i removed the spaces and somehow the logout button it is not recognizing okay that's fine not a big deal okay logout button it will automatically recognize that verify logout button okay fine i have a return these the logics so spaces is creating a much issues i removed the spaces hence the logic is identifying this is the way so guys uh, uh, let me consolidate the point what we discussed so far so far we studied how to generate step definitions how we are generating the first one is by executing test runner the second one is teddy jerkin plugin from chrome browser the last one is writing by our own all these three options we studied in order to generate a step definition the last point which i would like to add is let us add the test runner class once again now what it will happen means whatever the logics we have defined in the step definitions it will execute them for now we created a logic as system dot out dot print ln statements hence it will print those statements as an output let's see whether it is displaying that one or not even which is our valid scenario right click on a test runner run as a j unit test it's getting executed the script got executed successfully the step definitions are given when and then this is what we have written it executed them given when and then it printed that output to the console given when and then so one scenario got executed it has a three step definitions inside that and it printed everything to the console that's it so this is the way okay if you consolidate the whole thing what we discussed so far means in the eclipse editor okay in an eclipse editor the first step what we did means we created a feature file and for that particular feature file we generated the step definition and using test runner we executed that feature file that's it so this is the way how we have studied so far so from the next class onwards we will study few more options and even we will see how to write selenium logics inside that okay we'll see how to write down the selenium logics inside that that's all i have for the today's class see you again in the next lecture thank you bye bye good night hello hi everyone welcome to kukumba training program in the last class we studied about how to create a step definitions for the salesforce login scenario right i would like to continue the same concept with how can we create a, a reusable steps what exactly these reusable steps is how i would like to convert them so let me show you this excel file basically this excel file contains a scenario and as well as a manual test cases for the login functionality to a salesforce application so in this particular one now we have a created a test script for verify salesforce with valid credentials okay that's what we have written under the feature file so this i'm adding a comment stating that below scenario is for valid credentials great so the next scenario is below scenario is for invalid credentials okay i would like to do it for invalid credentials so let us try right now so what i am doing means 
so below logic is a for invalid uname and a valid password okay this is what the below logic is intended so here the scenario name i'm defining as verify a login with the invalid uname and a valid password great <coughs> excuse me this is what the scenario is for this scenario guys if you clearly observe the preconditions what exactly the precondition for this scenario i know that i need to open the gmail login page right open the gmail login page which is a precondition and then enter invalid a uname valid a password like this and a verify login page this is what the thing is so here i am writing it as given okay the naming i am giving it as open sf login page okay open sf login page when user enter invalid <clears throat> uname and a valid password and click on a login button okay and i clicked on a login button then verify login page that's what i have written this is scenario guys if you clearly observe here the given this given meaning is open the salesforce login page and what exactly the first scenario given in the current scenario if you observe this given command right this given command and this given is almost one and the same both these givens are almost one and the same which is to open the salesforce application so we have a return a two different givens here two different preconditions so the bottom line is if the precondition is a common then we no need to write down the preconditions separately for individual scenarios whatever the precondition we have a defined for one scenario we can use it for the second scenario okay we can use it for the second scenario then if i convert this one now how this is going to looks like means i am copying this a given accessing and i am placing it here for the second scenario also the precondition is a one and the same which is accessing the salesforce application so it means the precondition if it is a common directly copy the step name and paste it out there wherever you want you no need to write down a multiple steps for individual thing if you feel that it is a common then copy it and paste it that a step name directly automatically this logic is pointing to the above created step definition only this is the bottom line let me make a note of this point here okay let me make a note if we created a scenario already and if the second scenario needs any steps instead of rewriting them just use the steps whatever we have created from the first scenario okay whatever the steps we have created from the first scenario just use those steps nothing more than that so that the logic will point to about step definition only here the logic means when the execution comes to that scenario okay when the execution comes to that scenario then it will point to the first created step definition only okay it will point to the first created step definition only great like that i created one reusable step great i created one reusable step but moving on to this one 
okay moving on to this one so which is under the invalid username and that particular stuff we will see once after you completed with the two more scenarios in the excel file the two more scenarios are enter a valid username and an invalid password so here let me copy the whole step and i'm pasting it again below logic is for valid username and an invalid password i'm just changing the names here and in the when i'm changing valid username and an invalid password great so i have given these things the last scenario is basically a blank in order to blank what i am doing means again i am copying this scenario pasting here for empty credentials so here i no need to user no need to enter any values to you name and a password of fields that's it this is a simple point guys great so we created all these scenarios right the four different scenarios we have created see if you observe the when for each and every scenario their bottom line is to enter the username and to enter the password instead of creating individual steps for everything can't we create a common step which will be applicable for all these four this is how you need to analyze when you are working on your projects and in a frameworks so the ultimate objective of the first scenario step is to enter the username enter the password and click on a login button the second one is also one and the same which is used to enter the values the third one is also enter a values the fourth one is also entering a values so when working on our projects this is the most important thing which we need to consider okay great so how can i convert that so instead of a specifying a invalid username and a valid username and a valid credential something like that so here i am converting this step as enter username as and password as and click on login button so i am specifying this particular point enter username as enter the password as so here for the first scenario i am passing valid username and a valid password for the second scenario i can copy the same thing and i can enter invalid username and a valid password for the third scenario i can paste it as valid username and invalid password that's it so i have to specify like that and in the fourth scenario i can pass both as a empty so whenever i am passing both as an empty also that's fine great i just created this particular step definition that's it so i just created this step which is reusable for that the only thing is we need to pass the credentials the meaning is one and the same as a user we need to understand what are all the things we need to pass out over here either you need to pass a valid credentials or you need to pass an invalid credentials so let me open the step definition earlier whatever we have created this is the valid username and a valid password so i am passing my valid username and valid password for the first scenario okay for the first scenario i have a passed my valid username and a valid password for the second scenario i am passing my valid password and a invalid password as a surendra@gmail.com which is an invalid password and for the third one okay for the third scenario i am passing my valid username and invalid as a password and the last one i am leaving it as a blank that's it so we just converted this particular line but the bottom line is what exactly the step definition related to this one how the step definition step definition is going to modify for this scenario let us see for which i am trying to open my teddy jerkin to generate the step definition for this so here i am copying the step now and i am updating the step in this uh, teddy jerkin to generate this particular stuff fine 
I copied the step definition from there. Okay, I just copied the step definition from there. And in this step definitions, directly I'm placing this step definition, whatever we have copied. Okay, directly I just pasted this one out over here. And the first argument I'm passing it as U name. And the next argument we passed it as a password. Okay, the first argument we passed it as a U name, and the next argument we passed it as a password. Whatever the logic inside the Selenium logic, I am copying the Selenium logic and I am pasting it out over here. Instead of using these send keys, directly I am passing a U name, the parameter which is getting from that particular file, and I am passing this password here. Okay, and if you clearly observe the step definition, some kind of a regular expressions are getting displayed. The meaning of this regular expression is it will check enter username as, and here it is accepting any value, whether it is an empty value, also it will accept that. That's what the regular expression meaning is. So here it is a passing the regular expression, which is an empty regular. That regular expression meaning is which will accept any value from here. That's it. I just created this particular step definition now. To execute this one before executing, let me check out whether all the step definitions got implemented properly or not. Great. So I haven't implemented the step definition for this login page. I copied this home page, uh, this then from here. And I am pasting the then on the home uh, Teddy Jerkin and whatever the step it got generated. Let me copy the step and let me paste it here inside the step definition. So I am writing down. So here I'm using is displayed. So here is displayed a method, you know, in order to verify something. So here boolean login username login page is equal to I just verified this stuff. So it means I'm verifying whether this particular one is there or not. So if it is on a login page for sure the username field should display. So I just mentioned that like that login username and system dot out dot print ln login page only so I have a defined this one so I just added uh, the step definitions for everything see here I just added step definitions for everything guys so the only thing which I did now is from the scenario one I added a multiple scenarios to this file for each and everything I converted into a reusable scripts and I added it let me execute my test script and see how this is going to work. I'm executing my test runner now and see it should execute four different scenarios. Okay, let's see uh, for the very first time it entered the valid credentials. It clicked on a login button. That's fine. It verified that and it should execute the second scenario. So the second browser was launched for every scenario. It will launch an individual browsers and it will try to execute that. The second scenario execution was uh, uh, once it got uh, completed, then it will move to the third scenario like that. How many scenarios uh, we have uh, specified uh, those many browsers will be launched uh, and the execution will be carried out on those many browsers. See the third scenario, third browser was launched for the fourth scenario, fourth browser will be launched like that. Uh, how many scenarios uh, we have uh, created those many browsers will be launched in the current uh, feature file we have created four different scenarios one two three and a four see after the execution four different browsers got launched and the execution was carried out on a four different browsers so the bottom line for this particular concept is for this lecture is whenever you are working on your projects make sure that you people are creating these kinds of reusable steps and as well as a step definitions we need to analyze in such a way and then we need to create that so which will reduce the duplication of a code see in an earlier example if we haven't used this particular step here enter username and a password 
we will create four different steps inside that the logic is one and the same which will enter the username which will enter the password which will click on a login button right we will create a four different step definitions four steps and related four step definitions we will create right but as we are analyzing which we can reuse we are reducing the creation of a number of steps and we are working on further things so in the current scenario if you observe we created roughly five different steps using a five steps we have automated four different scenarios like this you need to analyze and you need to create the reusable methods we will continue this topic with a further more examples moving further but for this class this is the way how we need to convert keep on analyzing and keep on practicing the concepts guys in the next lecture we will study about the data driven testing that's all i have for the today's lecture see you again in the next class thank you bye bye hello hi everyone welcome to kukumba training program in the last class uh, we studied about uh, how to create uh, reusable methods and all those things so in the today's class i would like to discuss about uh, data concepts okay so how we are going to pass uh, multiple sets of uh, data that's what the actual concept is in order to handle this scenario i'm creating a new feature file and uh, my intention is uh, basically uh, i'm just uh, creating a new file <clears throat> sf so under the features i'm creating sf account create dot feature so i would like to create a new account for this particular feature file i would like to create a new account basically for the salesforce that's what i have written as salesforce account creation okay salesforce account creation dot a feature i have created that so in the feature file i'm making note as account creation for sales force great the scenario is basically okay so what i would like to define out as a scenario over here is scenario is create account <clears throat> to sales force application given open sales force application okay which page so i would like to open salesforce application account creation page and then when user enters so here i need to enter the username okay uh, let me open that application on a browser so that we people can understand what are all the pages or what are all the fields we have so i just opened the salesforce account creation page see this page contains if you observe the first name last name email address role company name country postal code username and all these details for suppose assume that in the last session we discussed about we can pass a multiple sets of data directly here so here user enters first name comma last name right comma email id and account i'm just entering the account company name okay company name like that if he is going to enter roughly there are a 10 to 15 fields are there which we need to pass a 10 to 15 fields information here which is not an appropriate way of creating a step definition or else a step file so basically we can create that but which is not suggested in a real time when we are working on that then what can we do how can we handle this particular one so here i'm converting user enter all the details so what are all the details a user needs to enter so the pipeline i'm representing the data with a pipe the first name see here i am directly giving these values so okay first name surin okay so it's not the first name actually my intention is in the first name field it should enter the first name in the last name field it should enter the last name okay so first name last name 
email address so let me write it down as an email okay and what are all the text fields company name company name okay i have written this as a com company name okay and then what else text fields we have we have a postal code and a username okay so here postal code username that's it so i have entered all these things here so the meaning is in the first name text field it should enter the first name in the last name it should enter the last name this is the data which i would like to enter for suppose if you would like to enter a different data first name in the place of first name enter your own data like that in the place of this one enter your own data whatever you want you can enter that particular data into that particular field but in my instance i would like to enter like this okay then what it needs to click on and then click on sign up button okay i just want to click on a sign up button that's it so this is the simple thing what we have written and moreover this a given opening the salesforce application we have a written already but we have a given a different url so i don't want to reuse that particular stuff which is used in a login feature my ultimate thing is i just want to use this particular different logics okay fine what's not so here these are the three different uh, steps let me try to use this a uh, teddy jerkin to generate the steps for all these uh, three so the java steps let's see how these uh, steps looks like based on that uh, we will create the step definitions also okay based on that uh, we will create the step definitions also so here i created i copied these uh, three lines and uh, in the step definitions i'm creating a new class sf account creation okay under which i'm placing this logic i'm placing this logic import a given import a when and uh, import a then remove these uh, data remove these uh, throws exception so let us start from the first one i would like to write down a opening of a salesforce application for which i am trying to open the previously generated script which will open the salesforce uh, login i am directly pasting it out over here so i need to define a web driver globally so web driver space driver i have defined this one globally great so we just created this one i need to change this application url copy the app url and update it in the get commands okay update it in a get command okay i just created this particular stuff too okay i just created this particular stuff great so this given will open the application and here we need to enter the user data which we have a passed how can we enter that see uh, the multiple data will comes under this data table whatever the multiple sets of data we are passing it will comes with the multiple sets of data which is a data table okay the data table represents the data whatever we are passing out over there so data okay that's fine so the entire line of information this username password and everything got captured in data now so data dot so here the first thing is basically we need to pull that data and we need to store it in a list of web elements the corresponding method we need to use is a ra this ra method is used to pull the data from the feature file and store it in list of strings in the current current step or current logic so here a list of string and i am storing it in a values so i need to import this list java utils list i just imported that okay so it is recommended to store in it a list of list of java utils okay that's fine i just created that 
so as of now the entire information whatever we have under this this line got a pulled and stored it in values now so here values dot get off for suppose in your scenario if you have written these two three four pipelines of information then we need to go for get off zero get off one get off two zero is gonna represent the first line one is gonna represent the two like that so in my current scenario i have only one line hence it's going to start with an index of a zero dot get index again what exactly the significance of this get index again so it means in the first row which value you want zero one two three four and a five for suppose a get off a zero and i would like to store it in a string val is equal to System not out dot print ln. The first name is plus val. So I have a returned that particular one now. Okay, the first name is I have a returned that particular value now. Great. I just captured this information. So let me add a comments here. We are using the two gets. First get will select the row. Second get will select the actual column means zero at the column first column like that so on up to fourth column whatever the column you have you would like to select that particular one so i just want to see this logic guys okay whether it is a printing this information or not so in the test runner let me change this okay in the test runner let me change this here save it let me try to run this a test runner okay let me try to run this particular test runner okay it's getting executed and it is opening the app okay that's fine this app got opened let's go back and see what value it returned here to the console as we have a given system dot out dot print ln the first name is the first name it pulled the first name so if you have any questions whether it is not retrieving the first name i'm giving it as chaitu as my first name the last name i'm giving it as a joseph and the email id i'm giving it as a chaitu1234 at the rate gmail.com company name i'm giving it as a freelancer and a postal code 500081 and the username chaitu one two three four five at the rate gmail.com now let me rerun these a test runner again it should print a chaitu to the console let me run my test script as a java application again and see whether it is returning that value or not so it's getting opening the app it should print that value that's it that's a simple logic what we have created and we printed that okay that's the simple logic what we have created that and it's going to print the same information let it open see the chaitu got returned to the console so it means the logic what we have written is a correct and it is trying to pull that it is trying to pull that information here now what i need to do instead of printing this information let's try to enter these values in corresponding fields in the application right let's try to fill these fields in the corresponding application only directly rather than doing that so let us try to identify the properties for the first name right click inspect and here the first name is having an id property go back i am writing down a command as driver dot find element by dot id dot send keys what exactly the first name you need to enter so from the values get off a zero of a zero this is the one which you need to enter so let me enter it as a first name great let us identify the last name so here the last name is having this one so let me add a comment below command will enter first name 
I would like to enter the last name. So below command will enter last name. Get the last name property from the browser and paste it here. And the last name index is one. So here from the first row index as a one. Great. And what else we passed here? The email address. Okay. So right click on an email ID inspect so the email id is also having an id property that's great let's okay let's try to enter the id property for the email too okay so here copy the id property for the email go back here paste it and the email id is the index of two below command will enter email id Great. The next value which we passed is a company name. Let's try to identify the company name property. Right click inspect element with a firebug. It is also having an ID property. So go back here. So the below command will enter company name. Get the company name ID property. Update it here in the program and change the value as a three. And the last value which we are passing is a pin code. Oh, we have a too many fields. Pin code, right click inspect element. Even pin is having an ID property. Let me update this command. Okay. Pin and username. We'll enter pin code. The ID property for this pin code is this is the one copy it and update it get off four and the last one will enter username right let's identify the username too this is the username this is the username id is a username update this and get off of five that's it we just specified all these things entries and everything now here at last, I need to click on, after entering all these things, I need to click on this button, right to click. This button is having an ID property, copy it. And I am writing down a command as a driver dot a find element by dot ID dot click. I am asking it to just click on that particular one. Okay, after clicking on that particular one, thread dot sleep for some time, and again, driver dot quit. I just want to close my browser. I don't want to use my browser at all. I just want to close my browser. Great. That's it. So let me try to run this class and see what it is executing. Run as a J unit test and see how the output is getting executed. Okay, how the output is getting executed. Let's see that. Okay, it opened the Salesforce <coughs> application. <laughs> great it should enter the values now see all the values it entered everything whatever we have specified it entered even it clicked on that and some error message gone it thrown and it uh, it closed the browser as we have a specified so like this we are retrieving the information from the feature file within a data table this concept we can call it as a data table where in which this data will be passed below the step itself one thumb rule which we need to consider out over here is whenever we are using a data table in majority of the cases it is used for the single sets of data and the data should be passed below the step itself okay below the step itself you need to pass the data we can't okay we can't pass the data outside the step at all okay we can't pass the data outside the step at all so before the step after that particular step only you need to pass that particular one great so guys uh, this is the way how to create this one and i have one small question here guys okay so uh, before going into parameterization which is a uh, multiple sets of data let me pull a small question here see our objective is right our objective is to identify and to create reusable steps right our objective is to identify and to create a reusable steps which we studied in the last lecture right 
if that's the case in the last example we created a step for opening an application and now also we created another step for opening an application which is duplicate again why can't we create a single step for all those files why can't we create that of course we have to then let's modify the first step of accessing salesforce application just by passing data table concept only just by passing the data table concept or like the yesterday's lecture pass the value pass the url within the step only okay within the step only i think passing the url within the step is the best one so here in the yesterday's one see if you observe accessing the salesforce application using the url so okay let me identify the url for the first one this is the url for the first thing okay and let us generate this step properly so i copied that step and i pasted the same thing in a teddy jerkin which is going to generate the step definition copy this name go back to your previous uh, program basically see accessing the site i am updating the name here and instead of opening the url driver dot get i'm specifying string argument one or i can customize this name url so i'm passing this url here so we are passing that url from there which is going to be a dynamic method a reusable method now copy the same method name and specify that a method name here sorry the given name here and the url for this one will change hence update that url in the current one update this url here so it means a single step definition we are using for multiple places a single step definition we are using for multiple places usually a simple question will rise in our mind these two are two different features how come our program will recognize it's not our program it's not our problem basically cucumber will recognize that that's what its ability is basically it will recognize the things okay it will recognize the things to cross check this one let me rerun the same program and check out whether it is opening the application or not let it execute okay it, it should open the application as for the url whatever we have a passed let's see see this url is opening so it means i created a single step so to uh, conclude this particular one whatever the step we have created we can use that particular step globally within the entire project that's what you need to know the bottom line is if i created one step it's not restricted to that particular feature we can use that particular step throughout the entire project okay throughout the entire project i can use that concept this is what the reusable conversion is great done up to here this is the basic thing and slowly if i forgot to convert anything as a reusable while you are practicing make sure that you people are converting them okay so so far we studied about how can we pass a multiple sets of data using a data table concept which should define a before the step after the step itself the data should be passed after the step and even the data will be retrieved via data table and using a raw method we are retrieving the data and using two gets we are getting the information and we are using in a salesforce application in the next lecture i will continue this topic with what exactly the parameterization is how we are going to use this parameterization and all those things in the next class that's all i have for today see you again in the next lecture thank you bye bye hello hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program 
in the last class uh, we created a couple of uh, scenarios and uh, we have executed our feature files right uh, along with the step definitions we have uh, executed our feature files so in the today's class my concept uh, what we are going to study is basically how can we execute a specific test scenarios see the simple point is basically we have if you clearly observe the feature files what we have created roughly in the login page we have a one scenario in the salesforce account we have a one like that we have a multiple scenarios created here so how can we handle these many scenarios so it means i would like to run only few sets of scenarios only out of available or out of defined 20 scenarios let's say so generally when we are working on an automation testing or in a manual testing basically once the deployment was completed we will conduct a smoke test on an application right we will conduct a smoke test on a particular application whenever this one is conducted whenever a release got executed whenever the deployment got executed successfully a smoke test will be run to check the complete deployment status in such cases we will have few sets of test cases are a few sets of scenarios which will verify the smoke test functionality or which will verify the smoke testing so how we are gonna split that particular one usually manual testing team will split the smoke test cases and regression test they will split for us basically so we have 20 scenarios are there for the entire application and manual testers identified five as smoke scenarios so manual testers identified that these five if this five got executed successfully the build execution build deployment was completed successfully so they decided with this particular five scenarios so whenever the deployment was completed in order to check out whether the deployment process is successful or not i need to execute only five scenarios out of 20 how come how can I specify only these scenarios it will execute? To specify this concept, we are using tags concept in Cucumba. So we people are using tags concept in Cucumba. So the ultimate objective of this particular tag concept out over here is we will specify or we will split down the scenarios into either smoke or regression or any other type we need to define at the rate name to the scenario and even in the test runner we need to specify the desired name which we need to execute let me show you a simple example for this so i have a three different feature files within my project and at the rate smoke test so i'm defining this feature file as at the rate smoke test the another feature file a scenario i'm defining it as at the rate regression test so this is a regression test scenario and this is a smoke scenario and another one is at the rate reg test only so i have added two regression test scenarios and one smoke scenario so we have one test runner class right so let me open the test runner whatever we have created within the test runner so here 
after the glues, I'm specifying tags is equal to smoke test. Let me check out the namings what I have given. It's a capital S, smoke, capital S smoke test i have a given only the smoke test okay let me run these a test runner and moreover in this test runner i am not specifying any feature file here directly i am pointing to this particular folder features of folder whenever we are pointing to that particular folder how many features are there it will execute on the features but the only thing it will consider is among all the feature files available it will check for the scenarios which are having at the rate of smoke test and it will execute only those scenarios let me run in my current scenario i have only one smoke scenario when there's a test got executed right? It will execute only one scenario let me see in the console basically so one scenario got executed for suppose for an instance so here i'm changing these reg tests to smoke test so out of a three scenarios in the current example out of a three scenarios okay out of a three scenarios for two scenarios we defined as a smoke test and let me run my test runner let me run my test runner so here right click run as a test runner so here it's going to execute and if you observe here the total number of scenarios there are two scenarios are there cool Great. Like this, what are all the smoke tests are there? We can execute that. So the main beauty of this particular one is, so we no need to maintain with this attacks, with this attacks, the main advantage is, we no need to create again another test suit for smoke test cases. Okay, for the smoke test cases what are all the suits or the scenarios we generated we can split from them with this tag annotation and moreover whatever the group we want we can execute with those groups and generally in the real time when we are working not only at the rate of smoke test we will define at the rate what additionally we want to do means test case hyphen zero 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 one so for suppose if at all you are maintaining your test cases in zira or version one or jeffer whatever the tool might be each and every test case or scenario will have a corresponding manual test case right so we will specify the manual test case here specifically to get the data from the excel files in order to get the data from the excel files we are using this test case a hyphen zero zero one and that particular annotation syntax okay so here we use it to define this particular way okay cool the test case name followed by a name okay test case number followed by a name which will be useful for us to pull the data from an excel file we will see moving further how exactly we can pull the data from any excel files but this is the way so with the help of these at the rate tag name and in this test runner we need to specify the desired tag names usually a simple question will rise on our mind okay if it is a single tag name that's fine i i would like to pass a multiple tag names then at the rate tag name two comma at the rate tag name three like that you people can pass what are all the desired tags you want you can just pass that particular tags information here automatically your script will be executed on those tags okay automatically your script will be executed on all those tags great so this is the way how can we how can we pick or how can we execute group of test cases okay how can we execute here in terms of a cucumber we can consider them as group of a scenarios in a bunch 
this is all about the tags and the concept guys in the next concept we will see in the next session we will see further more concepts that's all i have see you again in the next lecture thank you bye bye hello hi everyone uh, welcome to this uh, kukumba training program in the last class uh, we studied about uh, how to convert uh, the data using a uh, data tables and in the today's class i would like to go with parameterization concept let me open this uh, eclipse editor what we have uh, created yesterday so if you observe guys uh, yesterday we passed the data within a single line below the step this concept we can call it as a data table but my intention is i don't want to pass a single set of data i would like to run my test script on multiple sets of data in such a cases this is not the suggested way to handle this we need to follow a different approach great let me create a new step uh, feature file first of all then we can go for the step definition so in the feature file so i'm creating a new file sf account creation part 2 dot feature so yesterday we have already created right that's the reason i am creating as a sf creation account part 2 feature i just created this feature file and i think the content of whatever we have created is almost one and the same Hence, I am copying the previously created feature file information and I am pasting here. And I don't want the data which is passing here itself. Okay, the credentials, I don't want that data here. But I want to use it at the bottom, the data, whatever I would like to use. I just want to use it at the bottom. Okay, great. So for my future references, what are all the things I need to pass? I just kept it out over here let me maximize my eclipse editor see here i am not writing account creation for salesforce part 2 right we are using a, a parameterization concept so here instead of writing this step as a user enter all the details user enter details so here he will enter first name first so i am adding these a greater than and as well as a less than symbols the variable i am passing inside that so here we need to pass the variables so here in this syntax see here within this we need to pass the variable names okay under the greater than and as well as under the less than and as well as a greater than we need to pass the variable name so here i have a passed my first name as a variable name and last name and company name see guys i don't want to execute my script on a these many sets of data so i just want to run it on a first name last name and a company name that's the reason i have a given uh, user enter details a first name and last name and or else a first name comma last name and a company name okay so user enter these details that's it this is the step whatever i have created again you know uh, once after we created a step for sure we need to use a step definition for that so what i am doing means from my chrome browser i am launching this a teddy jerkin plugin from where this step alone i am copying and i am pasting that step here and i'm converting into a java steps let me grab these uh, java step so if you clearly observe here the step definition uh, dot plus this is uh, some kind of a regular expression uh, whatever it is uh, generating okay let me copy this uh, whole method go back uh, here in the yesterday's class uh, we have uh, this method so below this i'm placing this one okay so here string first name string last name string company name so this is the today's class method and this is the yesterday's class method the basic difference between these two is when we are passing the data within a single line below the step the data will be 
coming to the method in terms of a data table we need to get the raw data from that from there we need to pick individual values whereas whenever we are creating some variables when we are trying to pass that the step definition is directly converting into the variables string first name string last name string company name these are the three different types of strings which it is pulling and now let me copy the code for the first name last name and a company name from the below logic which we have created yesterday <coughs> and let me paste it out over here i don't want to use the values as we are not using values at all okay so uh, and the last one so this is the one okay this is the one so here in the first name i need to pass the first name in the last name i need to pass the last name in the company name i need to pass this company name great we passed these things but where we are passing the values right so for this a first name last name and a company name where we are passing the values so whenever we are choosing this method we need to pass the data within the feature file only using that pipe symbol at the bottom of the feature file okay greater here i need to pass it in a feature file i need to pass it here but one small thing is whenever we are declaring these variables <coughs> excuse me whenever we are declaring these kinds of a keywords in such a scenarios it's not going to be a scenario it's going to be a scenario outline okay so when we are planning to pass multiple sets of data then we need to define it as a scenario outline not just a scenario okay not just a scenario okay that's it so i have a defined as a scenario outline as soon as i defined as a scenario outline immediately feature file okay immediately some error messages are displaying in the feature file so there we need to pass the required data there we need to pass the required data so the data should be passed with see here the error message it is throwing right mouse over on that error message so mismatched input evos expecting examples the meaning is whenever you have a defined as a scenario outline we need to define examples where in which we need to pass in the first line we will pass variable names in the second line we will pass values to those variables okay let me pass so start with the pipeline first and the variable name is a username again okay so it's not a username it's a first name sorry so the variable name is a first name the next variable name is a last name and the next one is a company name so these are all the three variables the data which i need to enter out over here is specified like this so here the first name is chaitu the last name is okay the last name is joseph and the company name is a freelancer i passed this much of information so ultimately i converted this one into a step definition that's it i just created this one that's it this is a simple point of what we did right now okay this is the most simplest point what exactly we did right now okay cool so i just created this file but somehow the step definition is not recognizing here right somehow the step definition is not recognizing okay let us see why it is not recognizing this step okay so let me mouse over on this so it's not at all recognizing okay the logic let me look into the step definition 
okay we have a given properly and this is the name of when <coughs> let me paste it here let me grab this step definition and let me update it here you know whenever it got updated successfully it should display a hyperlink here right see the hyperlink is not displaying no step definition found this one so somehow it is not recognizing this okay so let me close this all once and let me refresh this project and see whether it is still recognizing or not it's not at all recognizing okay fine first name last name company name okay let me run my test script once okay why it is not recognizing even i am not sure so let me run this file and see based on that we can change it so in the test runner directly i'm changing this a feature file too okay let me run this run as a j, j unit test case hmm. it's getting executed as per the first step definition as per the first step it will uh, open the application it will try to enter the credentials or it will try to open the salesforce application and where it is getting failed let me look into these error messages a java null pointer exception encountered when the users these are all the details of feature file part of five okay so some kind of an error message is displaying in a console so when user is trying for this one so it is unable to recognize this one why okay let me change this step to the previous step let me change this one to here once again i'm just trying to debug the issue okay so why it is not recognizing i was just trying to debug that that's it okay let me try to update it here somehow i missed uh, a small step step i think scenario outline even it is not recognizing user enters user enters the first name last name and the company name okay okay let me check out this step why it is not recognizing the step definition is appropriate right the logic what it generated is appropriate and somehow it is not recognizing where are the step definitions as of account creation when okay so this time it is recognizing this somehow uh, i removed the spaces you know guys if you remember since from the day one uh, we are encountering the issues with the spaces only when we are trying to enter the spaces only we are getting the issues right uh, so after opening the application let me wait for some time thread dot to sleep for some time so i just want to wait after opening the application wait for some time and then next step is this one okay let me try to run this a test runner and see how this is going to work this time and one more modification which i would like to add is let me write down a command which will maximize my browser <coughs> all the time my browser is in a minimized mode i don't like this let me try to maximize my browser okay so we can pass right so window maximize we can use a window maximize the command to maximize the browser fine great so the script got a fail let me look into the issue so it is stating that step definition user entered the details as of account creation line 21 so it is having an issue in identifying the username yesterday this script got executed successfully but now this script is unable to execute let's see what is the root cause so here okay uh, let me bring it to this and let me identify the properties for this first name okay the id property is a first name only that's fine the class name the fields name everything is correct id okay the property id 
first hyphen underscore a name we have a given the first name only and the send keys okay so let me try in this way okay so before entering the values system not out dot print ln okay let me try to print the first name and let us see this okay whether these values are returning or not let us try to see this stuff first okay based on that uh, we can get confirmation so i would like to comment at this one and i just want to see whether it is a printing the required values or not okay let me run my script so somehow if you observe it is a directly pointing to okay so java null pointer exception okay the chaitu joseph got returned to the console it is a retrieving the values so it's not an issue in retrieving the values even it is opening the application also as soon as it opened the application it is encountering the issue in performing operations on this particular page why those objects are displaying on a page and even we used a valid properties only by dot id and other things we have a given a valid data only somehow it's not working at all okay let us see accessing the salesforce application okay so we passed that url webdriver.get command and we are trying to execute okay so uh, let me try to run this uh, login page of feature okay we have uh, another feature right see our ultimate objective is to identify what is the issue okay that's what uh, we are trying to do okay let me run this class and see whether this feature file is executing or not okay this just executed okay let me open the feature file somehow okay verify the gmail login functionality open sf login feature so i need to work on sf login feature so i am entering sf login in the test runner and let me run my class it should open the application and it should enter the value if it this work that's fine so there might be issue with that app if this is not working there might be an issue with this logic what we have a written so this time it is entering the values guys right so it is a performing operations with this particular one which is the salesforce login is working right so what is the issue with this sf account creation part okay let me rename this one to part to overcome this i changed this one to part so it won't create any issues but uh, wantedly i just want to see that so what we are doing in the step definition sf account creation part so we are opening the application and we are trying to enter print that information find element by id and a send keys so it's having an issue with an id and this one let me try with a company name and see okay let me try to run this script let me try to run this script and see see uh, the logic is one and the same we haven't changed anything else the method it is working with the salesforce application login page whereas it is not working with this scenario which is uh, okay so okay let me right click on a test runner run as a j unit test okay the user operation is waiting building workspace okay it is trying to build the workspace okay let's wait for a few seconds and see how this is going to execute okay fine uh, let us try to re-execute this script so i don't want to click on my sign up button first of all and uh, if you observe this particular logic so <clears throat> we commented to enter the username and a password okay we are asking it to just enter the company name information let me try to run this test runner class so guys the only thing what i did means 
<clears throat> so I'm having some issues with the Eclipse workspace. So I just closed in my Eclipse editor and I relaunched my Eclipse editor. Apart from that, I haven't did anything else. I just closed in my Eclipse editor and I reopened my Eclipse editor and let's see how this is going to work. So it should enter a company name. See the freelancer company name value got entered out over here and the script got executed successfully. Okay, cool. So this is the way how exactly we can pass this information. Okay, this is the way how exactly we can pass this information and how can we execute that. So the ultimate point is that we are passing the desired sets of data here under the examples. The basic thumb rule is that we need to define this scenario outline for sure. So whenever you would like to enter that particular information, you need to define as a scenario outline. And this time I uncommented the code which will enter the user name and a first name and a last name it executed the first name and a last name what I am trying to do means the ultimate objective of this particular concept is to pass a multiple sets of data right so this is a single data let me add a one more line here so I am giving my name as Lalita and here I'm giving it as a Joseph only again I'm giving uh, this as Amazon Okay, so I have given two sets of data. Let me try to run my script and see how this is going to work and the prayer that what I would like to do means I just want to maximize my browser. I thought to maximize my browser. So here driver dot manage dot a window dot maximize this is a web driver command to maximize my browser. I just asked it to maximize my browser for a visibility. That's it. It should execute on a two sets of data. The browser got maximized. Of course, it is opening the Salesforce application. It should enter the first set as a Chaitu Joseph and a freelancer once. Okay, so let's see. So Chaitu Joseph, a freelancer, got entered. As we have a given second set of data, it is executing on a new browser. So the ultimate point out over here, which we need to consider, is whenever we have a multiple sets of data, this set of data will execute on all the steps, and this set of data will execute on all the steps. If there are 20 sets of data, this data will launch the browser, will perform the operations from the scratch. I can add a one more or two more sets of data. <clears throat> How many sets of data is there? It will launch those many sets of browsers and it will perform those many operations. This is what the bottom line is. So the basic differences between a data table and the parameterization is data table. We just need to pass the data below the step. Whereas in the parameterization, we need to change the scenario name as a scenario outline and the required data. We need to pass it under the examples. How many sets of data is there? This the scenario will execute those many times. This is the bottom line <clears throat> and one major issue which we are encountering all the time is with the spaces whenever there are additional spaces even though we are writing the step this is not recognizing that particular step so from the next lecture we will make sure that we are not providing any extra spaces in the steps and as well as the step definitions that's it so that's all i have guys see you again in the next lecture thank you bye bye good night Hi everyone, welcome to Cucumber training program. In the last class, uh, we studied about a couple of scenarios and examples. So in the today's class, I would like to give you a brief overview on defining a preconditions and the post conditions. Okay, defining a preconditions and a post conditions. As uh, we are having some basic idea on Selenium, if you have an idea on both the J unit and a test ng, we have a at the rate before and at the rate in and after, where in which we are uh, defining the preconditions and a post conditions in a framework level, right? Whatever the preconditions and a post conditions are there, we are defining in a before and an after, where in which uh, before executing any test cases the preconditions are before will be executed and after executing the script the post conditions will be executed that's what we have in a j unit and a test ng don't we have a, any such kind of a preconditions and a post conditions in cucumber
so we have a two different options guys one is a before uh, one is a background and another one is a hooks concepts in cucumber background and a hooks are used to define a pre conditions and a post conditions in cucumber great let us see what exactly a background is how we are going to define a background with a simple example so for now i'm just closing everything and let's switch back here to this particular project and now what i am trying to do now means so here if you observe the login page dot a feature so there's a login page dot a feature has a multiple scenarios right this login page dot a feature has a multiple scenarios right roughly there are a four to five different scenarios are there for this login page dot a feature but the another small point is if you clearly observe the given for everything the given is one and the same for all these scenarios see for the four scenarios the given is one and the same which is the precondition is one and the same instead of defining the preconditions in a scenario level let's try to define the scenarios or the precondition in a feature file level so here i am changing it to background verify open a landing page so it is not recognizing let me change it to background so background is a keyword which i need to use so that it will recognize that so in which i am copying this a given and i am pasting it out over there so i am removing given in all the step definitions or in all the scenarios so roughly we have a four scenarios are there for all these four scenarios i have a removed this precondition and i kept it out over here okay so earlier as per my knowledge we have already implemented these step definitions why it is coming like that let's switch to the login page and see okay somehow we commented this a piece of a code i'm just uncommenting this uh let me remove this uncomment this okay so okay let me uncomment that okay cool so okay so this is what the logic whatever we have in a previous test scripts right this is what the logic whatever we have created in a previous scripts great let me see what else we have enter the username and a password for this we have this logic implemented one second oh do you have a multiple kukumbo test step definitions and kukumbo surin kukumbo okay so we are in surin kukumbo and this logic is pointing to surin kukumbo okay given when 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 the user enters okay so enter a valid username and a password enter invalid username and a password okay so here there should be the scenarios the step definitions we have already the step definition for this okay this is not the one okay so there is a, some miscommunication so the issue out over here is i have a given this a scenario in an improper way due to a lot of modifications what i did so that's the reason it is not navigating properly so here let me change it user enter valid a username password and a click on a login button okay a uh, verify logout link okay we have a logic for verify logout link and enter invalid username we have a logic for that enter valid username even we have a logic for that and uh, enter this one it's pointing to the different page so 
user enters so i'm just copying this step definition and i'm pasting okay so uh, wantedly i just uh, corrected everything and uh, each and every step has a step definition okay login page every step has a corresponding step definition within the project it's not outside the project every step has a corresponding step definitions now the point is this is common which is opening of a gmail application is a common for all these scenarios that's the reason we have a created a background and we are defining the given depending on a need we can add when and then also depending on your need you can add a when and a then also for this step or this feature file so that as per the logic it will execute so let me copy this step definition or a feature file name let me update my feature file name here and let me run my test so the significance of this background this background is a precondition which will be defined and executed each and every time so for this scenario uh, i'm not going to write down any new say uh, a script with the selenium so i would like to write down a normal stuff gmail okay gmail login dot feature okay i have a written gmail login dot a feature feature verify gmail login functionality okay and the scenario is valid user credentials okay given given accessing gmail application when user enters you name and a password then verify logout button okay the same way the second scenario which i'm creating out over here is the second scenario is invalid user credentials given accessing gmail application when user enters invalid a u name and a valid password then verify login page so these are all the two things and apart uh, in these two things uh, the precondition is a uh, one and the same which i am defining in a background verify gmail a login page okay so i am removing the given from both the scenarios and i have a defined out over there directly in the background so we need to write down the step definitions for these things so let me create a new class here gmail login page okay i am not writing down any step definitions copy when and then place it in a teddy jerkin get the when and then for that and paste it in your gmail login here the same way copy when and then for these two paste it in a teddy jerkin and get this information and place it in your step definition finally we have a given also copy the given step paste it here get the step definition go back paste it here import the required things import a given okay import a given import a when import a then delete these uh, th uh, throws exception command and now the logic is the given i know it's a precondition system not out dot print ln defining precondition user enters this one so system dot out dot print ln enter valid credentials verify logout button system not out dot print ln logout button got displayed the same way invalid credentials 
So I'm writing now on the system not out dot println enter invalid credentials and the same way for the login page also I'm writing down login page got a displayed so I have a implemented step definitions now let me copy the feature file name gmail login feature let me paste it in the test runner and change this file name and see the console let me run the test runner as a java application and let us see okay it is having some issues okay it is having some issues with the step definitions mobile okay so it is having some issues with the mobile step definition where is the mobile step definition here it is let me comment this whole code i don't want this one let me comment this whole stuff now let me run my test runner again run as a jnit test this time it executed successfully if you clearly observe here defining preconditions it executed that it's gonna execute first and enter the valid credentials logout button defining preconditions enter invalid credentials somehow the logout one was not executed verify the login was not executed seems like it was unable to recognize the feature file okay it was unable to recognize the step definition let me remove the spaces we know this is the most common issue which we usually encounter so i have removed the spaces and now let me run my scenario and see here so the logic present in a background got executed before executing every scenario before executing every scenario the logic present in a background got executed okay the logic present in a background got executed all the time so the only one point of which we people need to remember is we can define this a background within a single feature file itself okay for suppose i am executing multiple feature files okay so in my current scenario let us assume that we have a gmail login feature and an android ui feature i have a given my background in a gmail login this background will be applicable only for this Gmail login. If you would like to define another precondition, then you need to go for the Android UI. And again, here you need to write down a background separately for this. So background is applicable only for this feature file. We don't have any common background for multiple feature files okay we don't have a, any common background for the multiple feature files okay accessing sites okay that's fine whatever it might be i have given that so the ultimate point of what we people need to consider is when we are dealing with this particular background this background is applicable only for that particular feature file we can't use this a precondition for the multiple feature files only one that's it that's the bottom line which you need to remember the next concept which we are going to study is applicable for all the feature files okay we are gonna applicable uh, for all the feature files which we will use the uh, most frequently in our frameworks the next concept which we are discussing we will use the uh, most frequently in our frameworks okay this is a brief overview about the uh, backgrounds okay fine that's all i have see you again in the next lecture thank you Bye bye hi everyone welcome to cucumber training program in the last class uh, we have uh, seen a brief overview on a background but the drawback for that particular background is it will be applicable only for one feature file so my intention is i don't want to define my preconditions or post conditions uh, with respect to a single feature file i would like to use them globally in such cases, we can use at the rate before and at the rate options available here. So what I'm going to do right now means under the step definitions. So I'm creating a new class before and after step definition. Okay, the name itself will tell you before and after. So like the normal J unit and a test ng, how we are specifying the before and an after, the same way we are specifying before and an after. So at the rate of before is an annotation, at the rate of before. So 
public void precondition and here system dot out dot print ln precondition the same way at the rate after public void post condition so now i am defining the post conditions here at the rate of void post conditions i am defining here so system dot out dot print ln post conditions so the before and an after let let me import them. See, I don't want to import these before from my J unit. I just want to import my before from Cucumber API. So I just want to import my after also from my Cucumber API. Hence, I have a specified before and as well as an after. Okay. In the previous scenario, the Gmail login, let me comment these background given and background. So I just want to comment these two. Okay, I just want to comment these two and my Gmail login contains two scenarios valid credentials and invalid credentials in the before at the rate of precondition launch the browser here. We are launching a browser in the post condition close the browser. I have a defined a close the browser. Let me execute my test runner with the Gmail login and see how this is going to work. When I run this particular one, if you clearly observe before executing this scenario, the precondition got executed and after executing the scenarios, the post condition also got executed. So the ultimate point is at the rate of before and an after are used to define preconditions and as well as a post conditions in the real time when we are working on a project level just what we will define means we will launch a browser here and open the application on the browser we will write down a selenium code for that and here in the after we will close the browser and even depending on a project we will close the reports and all those things we will terminate all those things are here in the after so like this at the rate before and at the rate after are going to define within this particular step definitions okay fine guys so we have a defined a precondition and as well as a post conditions are here this is what this concept is and we have a similar concept of which we can call it as a hooks okay and one more small point is if you observe the precondition and a post condition this is not applicable to a single feature file this will be applicable for all the feature files so within the project how many feature files are there this logic is going to applicable for all those feature files okay this logic is going to applicable for all those feature files before executing every scenario the content present in a before will be executed after executing every scenario the content present in an after will be executed okay like this the before and an after will be used and uh, we have a small concept uh, called as a uh, hooks is uh, available. So what exactly this uh, hooks uh, means for suppose my intention is uh, basically I have a uh, created test scenarios for both mobile automation and a uh, web automation using selenium. But the preconditions for both the is a differ right the precondition for a mobile is a bit differ the precondition for a normal web application is differ then how we are going to specify those before and after separately for these two so a simple point is in the gmail login now this scenario i am defining it as at the rate web test okay at the rate of web test the same way here for the another two scenarios i'm creating okay i'm creating another two scenarios okay two two more scenarios and here i'm defining as mobile test okay i'm defining these two scenarios as a mobile test so i'm adding a tags for them initially and the scenario is verify switch button okay i would like to verify the switch button okay so what i'm gonna do means open the app verify the switch button 
okay open the app verify the switch button and uh, here the another scenario with respect to mobile is uh, click on a switch button or else i click on a switch okay verify the switch verify the switch and uh, click on that verify okay uh close the app that's it i have a defined a mobile scenarios so in this scenario you know that for a normal web app the scenarios are the precondition each it should launch a browser and it should open an application whereas for a mobile testing the precondition you know that you need to create a designed capabilities and you need to specify the operation if that's the case how we are going to separate the before and an after for a mobile and a web app so directly what i am doing means under the before i am adding the tag name so here the tag name for this one is at the rate of web test the meaning is this is before of a at the rate of web test the same way if i gave it for after this is an after for web test the same way we can copy and paste it here for mobile test so i am updating this one with the mobile test at the rate a mobile test before and at the rate a mobile test after and the pre condition mobile and the post condition mobile launch the application close the application that's it so whenever you specify that automatically corresponding logics will be executed for suppose in my scenario i have a preconditions for this okay now when i run my test runner this time it will launch this and it will execute this see here precondition for a mobile launch the app close the app launch the app and i close the app as we don't define as we haven't defined any step definition for them it's not executing but the only thing what exactly you people need to consider out over here is if you are having a different types of test cases in your step definitions or files you need to define the tag for each and everything and for the before and an after we will specify that particular tag so it will execute only for those attacks it won't execute globally like this we are separating the pre condition and as well as a post condition for both the mobile and as well as a web applications moreover in the real time whenever we are working on our projects we are not going to give much importance to the background which we discussed in the last class while working on our projects we will define a pre conditions in a before and after in a post conditions after and we will create a separate before and an after step definition where we'll in which we will write down the pre conditions and a post conditions for suppose if your application is having a multiple things like mobile devices and web applications in such cases we can use these hooks concepts where in which uh, for the before and an after you need to specify a specific tag automatically that before and an after will be applicable for those uh, tags only if you if you haven't uh, specified uh, any tags or a uh, hooks for the before and an after generic before and an after will be applicable for all the scenarios uh, present in a feature file and moreover this a before and an after will be applicable for multiple feature files if there are a 20 feature files are there for all those 20 features for the individual scenarios this before and an after will be executed okay so this is the bottom line and in the next class we will continue with the further topic that's all i have see you again in the next lecture bye bye hello hi everyone welcome to selenium training program Today we are going to study a brief introduction about Jenkins. So these days the majority of the people are using this Jenkins either with respect to the development standpoint or a testing standpoint. What exactly this Jenkins is, which is a continuous integration tool. People are calling it as a CI CD tool, continuous integration tool. Okay, so why are we using this continuous integration tool for our testing? See, a simple point out over here is assume that you want to run your automation test scripts every day at 1 a.m. IST 
and automatically after the execution it should publish the test results to all the people so this activity should complete by 9 a.m assume that your automation test scripts will take roughly seven to eight hours of time so will it be possible for you to open your machine at 1 a.m and run always every day to run the test scripts and after the execution will it be possible for you to publish the results it's not at all possible right instead of doing this activity Jenkins is helping us in achieving this task. We have a bunch of integrations with Jenkins using which we can automatically execute our test script and we can publish our test execution results to the respective people. Cool. For that reason, we just need to use this Jenkins. But in the real world, guys, you no need to install or configure Jenkins in your machine okay the reason is whenever you are working on any project if they are using a continuous integration tool means they have a jenkins server installed in their machine we just need to configure that and we just need to use that as this is our local machine so we are trying to download jenkins in our local machine and configuring it here okay so this is a different process when compared to the top the real world okay so let us see how to download jenkins in our machine uh, i'm opening my chrome browser to perform this one and i'm searching for jenkins downloads okay i'm just searching for jenkins download and i'm clicking on a first link which is navigated to jenkins official website downloads page and from here if you scroll down it has a bunch of information related to Jenkins. Among all this, we have Jenkins Java package, which is a var file. As soon as you clicked on that, it's going to download Jenkins dot var file into your machine. So once it got downloaded successfully, then place the file in the C drive. Okay. See here. Let me navigate to my C drive. And show you here I have a downloaded that var file and I kept my var file here okay uh, let me delete this one for now and uh, let me download this var file again and let us place this var file in that particular C drive so we can place it in any way but uh, the best and the simplest way is placing this Jenkins not var file in a C drive is the best way so that's the reason I'm just using the same step uh, where in which I'm trying to place my Jenkins dot var in a C drive you can use it in any other folder location okay it got downloaded successfully once it got a downloaded let me open the file and now let me copy it and then let me place that file in my C drive directly so it is asking me some admin privileges just give it directly place your jenkins here and i'm renaming it to jenkins.var okay instead of jenkins1.var i'm just renaming it to jenkins.var that's it so we have a successfully downloaded it then how to trigger it one means open the command prompt from the c drive so directly what i'm doing means here in the c drive i'm entering command prompt cmd and hit enter button automatically it's launching a command prompt for me so here java space hyphen jar space jenkins dot var hit enter button as soon as you hit on an enter button it's going to configure and download all the required Gen Jenkins configuration in your machine and it will take a few seconds to completely start the Jenkins server and uh, usually as uh, we are using Jenkins in our local machine in order to access it remotely see here 8080 we can use localhost 8080 in order to work on this Jenkins within the machine
okay see here it's trying to download all the dependencies whichever the stuff it required it's trying to download all the things and even it is downloading all the plugins related to jenkins it will take a few minutes uh, to completely download all these plugins once it got it downloaded successfully in the command prompt it will display a confirmation message stating that jenkins is up and running here i noticed that 8080 is my port name so in the browser i'm using localhost 8080 see in the command prompt it's still continuing the process of installation see here please wait while jenkins is getting ready to work your browser will be reloaded automatically once the jenkins is ready okay once the jenkins got ready it will be reloading that information good enough done the deal so let us wait for a few seconds uh, once it got uh, completed this setup and at the very first time whenever you are using jenkins in your machine usually after this screen it will prompt you to a screen where you can create your own users i have already created my user earlier so it won't prompt me to create a user for suppose when you are trying to configure it in your machine it will prompt you to create a user at the time of a creation it will ask you to pass the admin password and even it will give you the location where the password is just navigate to the folder and get the password update it in the jenkins so that user creation screen will display and successfully create your user there okay good enough see it's still downloading my plugins see here uh, please wait while the jenkins is uh, ready so it will take a few seconds uh, to completely configure this jenkins in the machine let's wait for a while cool now in the command prompt if you can see here jenkins is full up and running so it got uh, running successfully now and if you switch back to the browser for me it's navigating to the login screen whereas for you people it will ask you to enter your admin password as mentioned earlier and after that once after you created the user this is the screen it's going to populate and in this screen once after you logged in you know you can perform the various kinds of operations on jenkins so i'm just clicking on a sign in and this is the screen it's going to display for me and once after you configured or once after you just logged into the jenkins the very first step which we need to do is a configuration of a jenkins so what we need to do as part of our configuration means we just need to specify our java version maven version all other details if at all you have a install git in your machine the git exe files all those are parts you have to specify within this jenkins so let me try to update that information in my uh, jenkins so for which i'm just clicking on a manage jenkins and under the manage jenkins we have a global tool configuration where i need to update this info okay under global tools configuration here i need to update the information okay let us see once it got loaded we will see so let me try to load this one manage jenkins so this is how the manage jenkins screens look like and here global tool configuration is the option which i am selecting and i am just navigating to my global tools configuration so here we have a jdk installation add the jdk path so here whenever you are specifying this one you know you can just specify the java direct the path wherever it got installed you can directly specify that particular path so i'm installing this jdk and here add installer i'm just trying to install it and i don't want to install it automatically i want to install it manually so here java home so wherever the java is configured in your machine the same jdk path i would like to point out over here so i'm just pointing out my java path till the bin i'm just pointing out my path and the similar way here we have a maven 
I'm just clicking on a add a Maven and I don't want to go with the install Maven. I just want to specify my Maven as well. Maven underscore home to see where exactly my Maven is. What I'm doing means I'm navigating to my uh, advanced system settings from where I just want to navigate to my environmental variables and see here is my Maven version. So I'm just copying my Maven version and the same I'm updating here. Okay, this is what my Maven version is. Save and it will automatically come back here. That's it. This is the basic configuration. And we have these manager plugins is there. Under these manager plugin sections, we can add any kind of a plugin whichever we want. For suppose if you want to work on specific email configurations, whatever the plugins are there related to that configuration, you can add all those plugins to your Jenkins so that automatically you can perform the operation. Of course, we are going to study additional plugins which we need to add to our editor moving further, but this is the place from where we can add the plugins. So moving back, so the, here is a screen where we can create a new project and we can specify the project, whatever we have created in our local machine and we can continue further. So we will see how we can create a project and how to run that particular project. We will see in the next session. Thank you. Hello. Hi everyone. Welcome to Selenium training program. In the last session, uh, we discussed uh, how to download and uh, configure Jenkins in our machine. So the next and most important thing is how to run our code from Jenkins right before jumping on and running our code from the Jenkins the first and most important thing which we need to consider is once after you are done with your scripting make sure that you are able to run your test script from the command prompt successfully Okay, if you are able to run your test script from the command prompt successfully, then automatically your Jenkins can recognize it and you can perform the operations. Good. So what I'm going to do right now means I'm considering my automation testing project. So this is a Maven project as uh, in the previous lecture, we have already studied what is a Maven project and how to create a Maven project. So right to click on the project, go to the properties and uh, i'm identifying the location and i'm just clicking on a show in explorer okay it's just pointing to my for a uh, project workspace in which i'm navigating to my project so this is what my project here which has a pom.xml file so here i'm trying to open the command prompt from this folder so directly i entered a cmd and i hit an enter button so my command prompt is a pointing from this particular folder c users estrogen workspace automation testing good enough so once it got a populated the next and most important commands we need to run is maven compile and mvn test these are the two different commands of which we need to cross check or which we need to use in the command prompt to see whether our script is executing or not mvn compile i'm just using the first command now so it's going to compile the complete source code and it will show us if there are any errors or warnings within our source code so let us see here it's executing and the build is a success good enough and the next thing is mvn test so let me run it so whenever you have a specify mvn test it's trying to build the project and now it will try to execute your test script from the command prompt so the automation uh, test script it has uh, some logic which will launch a browser and it will perform some operation on a browser so the same thing it's performing here it's launching a browser and it's opening the app and it's trying to perform certain operations on a browser that's fine somehow my script got a fail so all the details it got executed and everything got printed in the console successfully so the thumb rule out over here is once we confirm that we are able to run our automation scripts from the command prompt then we can take this code okay then we can take this code to the jenkins from where we can run this script 
okay from where we can run the scripts good enough so i have a successfully performed this operation and now another command which we need to remember is for suppose in your project if we have a multiple runners so in this project basically under the runner class we have an example runner and a test runner assume that you have a 10 different runners are there among all those runners if you want to execute only one specific runner then mvn hyphen d test is equal to runner name space test you have to give so here i can specify my runner name is one test runner one space a test this will be executing only that particular runner among all the runners whatever you have okay good enough done the deal so this is the way we confirmed that i was able to execute my test script from the command prompt now i'm switching to my jenkins and i just want to configure a job in a jenkins let's switch back to jenkins now so i'm opening my jenkins here so this is how my jenkins looks like and i would like to create a new job so new and uh, i'm naming it as bdd framework demo and by default i'm picking up a freestyle project and clicking on an ok button as soon as you clicked on this ok button it's going to create a new project here for me in which I need to perform a complete configuration of my Jenkins job here. So here, if your project is in Git or Subversion, you can specify the information and the repo URL, whatever the credentials you want, automatically your test scripts will be pulling it. Uh, this Jenkins job will be pulling your source code from this repository, whatever you have specified. Like this, you can specify your required information whereas in my situation i don't have my source code in gen uh, kit as of now so i have my source code in my local machine so click on advanced and if you see too many options are populated among those you have a one option use a custom workspace click on that and you need to specify the directory where we have your pom.xml so here Automation testing. This is what my pom.xml directory is. Copy it and place the directory here. So my meaning is in this particular directory, we have a pom.xml. This is what the custom directory I have specified. And now if I scroll down, what it needs to perform, see here build triggers so if i choose this build periodically i can say that with this particular option run every two hours run after four hours such kind of a periodic operation we can perform using this build triggers and even you can do configuration here and a build means what kind of an options you have to do see for me i need to use a maven test right so for which i'm using invoke top level maven targets here from the build and here it is suggesting me the maven version among those i have already configured my maven home in a global tool configuration i am picking that and my requirement is mvn space test is an option which will be triggering my maven test so as we are already specifying the maven hence i can remove these mvn keyword here and i can directly use a test option automatically it will be triggering my test and the similar way you do have an option to configure the post build actions these post build actions you know email notifications once after my script got executed you can trigger an email those kind of an options you can do which we will see in the next session but for now i just configured the only thing is i specified my project location followed by the maven test and i'm clicking on a save button as soon as i clicked on a save button this is the screen it's populating which is our project bdd framework demo and i'm clicking on build now as soon as you clicked on a build now see here it's executing first time and here in the console output it's going to see the complete information about the execution whether it's got passed whether it got a fail what is the reason behind the failure whether it is executing or not the complete information it's going to populate here with the details just we need to understand these details and we need to see 
whether it is executing or it's getting failed. So the Java environmental variable is not defined correctly. Then this environmental variable needs to be run. So Java home should be pointed to JRE, JDK, not JRE. So I guess we made some mistake here. So what I'm going to do right now means go to manage Jenkins and under which global tool configurations where we have a configured our JDK. See, I pointed to my JDK itself. C program files the Java JDK bin does not looks like the JDK folder. Okay, let me save till this JDK. Okay. And now let us see here whether the build is executing or not. See, it's still trying to execute this one. So invoke the top level management. Let me close this process. So it should stop the execution. Okay, back to the project. And now abort it. And let me try to build it again. So I'm just trying to build it now. So as soon as you clicked on a build now, the second execution will be triggered. But build one is already in a progress so there is some issue with my build one because of which even though i clicked on terminate it's not terminating and even when i start a new job it's depending on my previous job so let's wait for a few seconds until the build one got terminated and see how it's going to work so this Javi is uh, continuously running. So what I'm doing now means in my command prompt, let me stop my Jenkins server and close this tab completely. And uh, let me relaunch my um, Jenkins. Okay. So command prompt Java space hyphen jar space Jenkins dot aware. I'm just trying to start my Jenkins server once again. The reason is earlier it took more time for me even to terminate that particular instance as well hence i'm creating uh, i'm just restarting my jenkins to see whether it is updating the info properly or not see jenkins is up and running now and i'm trying to open my local host 8080 and let us log in into these jenkins job the jenkins environment and uh, here what I want to do right now is whatever the job we have uh, created earlier at BDD framework okay it's trying to run the second job okay so let us see it's trying to work on this particular job and it is uh, stating that build is a success total three run and such info is displaying okay go back and let me try to build it now Okay, I'm just trying to re-execute my job again. See, the third instance is getting created. And uh, see, this time it launched in my browser and it is performing the desired operation. So this is the way how exactly we can create a job and automatically it will be executing that information. Good enough, done the deal. So my test script got executed successfully from the Jenkins okay good enough so let me refresh my project once in an eclipse data and in the test results folder let us cross check see here my script got executed and the execution results i can see here in this particular editor so we can share this test execution report so if at all you want you know you can directly share this test execution report from your machine so this is the way how to create a job, how to observe the log here for a Jenkins job and how can we execute that. So in this project, the only thing if I want to change my configuration, click on config. So in this project, if you clearly observe, we have a specified the project location and directly we are using a MVN test to execute it. So let us see how can we configure a post build actions in order to send an email notifications. We will be studying in the next lecture. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Salesforce application low login again. Tarata user creation page. Kelthana nena file user create a user page. Kochi ikrana kuka magnifying icon on the day. Then click chase then a kuka kota window open out of the edigo. This is the window. So, in the low, this web page low, this is the end part. So, the right click inspect. Inspect a quote in the rata. See, see, 
ఇది మొత్తం ఫ్రేమ్ సెట్ అని ఉన్నది సో ఫ్రేమ్ సెట్ లో ఒకటి టైటిల్ సర్చ్ సర్చ్ ఫ్రేమ్ ఇంకొక ఫ్రేమ్ ఉన్నది రిజల్ట్స్ ఫ్రేమ్ అంటే ఈ బ్రౌజర్ లో ఉన్న ఈ పేజ్ ని రెండు ముక్కలు చేశారు ఒకటి సర్చ్ ఫ్రేమ్ అని రిజల్ట్ ఫ్రేమ్ అని సో మీ యొక్క ఆపరేషన్ ఏ ఫ్రేమ్ మీద అయితే మీరు పెర్ఫామ్ చేయాలి అనుకుంటున్నారో దానికి ఇట్లా యునిక్ ప్రాపర్టీస్ ఉన్నాయి నేమ్ ఉంది ఐడి ఉంది ఆ ప్రాపర్టీని మీరు ఐడెంటిఫై చేసి అట్లా మనం స్క్రిప్ట్ కింద ఇన్పుట్ కింద ఇస్తే ఆటోమేటికలీ ఆ ఫ్రేమ్ మీదే అది వెళ్ళి ఆపరేషన్ పర్ఫామ్ చేస్తుంది అండి ఓకేనా డన్ ద డీల్ ఇది ఇట్లా అయిపోయింది సో ఇప్పుడు ఫ్రేమ్స్ లోకి నేను స్విచ్ అయ్యి ఆపరేషన్ పర్ఫామ్ చేసిన తర్వాత బాటమ్ లైన్ నా రిక్వైర్మెంట్ వచ్చి జస్ట్ ఈ అప్లికేషన్ చూసుకుంటే ఓకే స్విచ్ అయ్యి ఉపయోగం ఉంది ఇక్కడ డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ ఉన్నది ఓకే సో నా సో ఇది దీన్ని డ్రాగ్ మీ అరౌండ్ దీన్ని ఇక్కడ నుంచి ఎక్కడికన్నా నేను డ్రాగ్ చేసి డ్రాప్ చేయొచ్చు సో వెబ్ డ్రైవర్ లో నేను దీన్ని ఎలా డ్రాగ్ చేసి డ్రాప్ చేస్తాను అన్నది నా రిక్వైర్మెంట్ అది నాకు ఒక టెస్ట్ కేసు సో వెబ్ డ్రైవర్ లో మీరు ఇలాంటి యాక్షన్స్ కనుక పర్ఫామ్ చేయాలి అంటే యాక్షన్స్ క్లాస్ ఉంటుంది అండి ఓకే యాక్షన్స్ ఏ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు న్యూ యాక్షన్స్ యాక్షన్స్ అన్నది మన యొక్క వెబ్ డ్రైవర్ లో ఒక డిఫాల్ట్ క్లాస్ మాట ఇట్లాంటి యుఐ ఆపరేషన్స్ డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ రైట్ క్రిక్ స్క్రోల్ బార్ మౌజ్ ఓవర్ ఇలాంటి యాక్షన్స్ ఏమన్నా పర్ఫామ్ చేయాలి అంటే మన యాక్షన్స్ క్లాస్ ఉంటుంది అనమాట సో ఎట్లాగో ఇందాక దానికి వెబ్ ఎలిమెంట్ ఎస్ఆర్సి అని పెట్టేశాను ఇది ఈ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ యొక్క దానికి ఈ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ కి నేను వెబ్ ఎలిమెంట్ క్రియేట్ చేసుకున్నా ఎస్ఆర్సి అని సో నాకు యాక్షన్ క్లాస్ లో ఇలా డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ ఉన్నప్పుడు రెండు కమాండ్స్ ఉన్నాయి డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ రెండోది డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ బై ఈ డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ బై అన్నది ఎప్పుడు యూస్ చేస్తాను అంటే నాకు దేన్ని డ్రాగ్ చేయాలో తెలుసు ఎక్కడ డ్రాప్ చేయాలో తెలియదు అలాంటి సిచ్యువేషన్ లో సెకండ్ ఆప్షన్ కి వెళ్తా ఫస్ట్ ఆప్షన్ నాకు దేన్ని డ్రాగ్ చేయాలి ఎక్కడ డ్రాప్ చేయాలి తెలుసు అన్నప్పుడు ఫస్ట్ ఆప్షన్ కి వెళ్తా మన ఎగ్జాంపుల్ లో చూసుకుంటే దీన్ని డ్రాగ్ చేయాలని తెలుసు కానీ ఎక్కడ డ్రాప్ చేయాలో తెలియదు సో అందుకని నేను సెకండ్ ఎగ్జాంపుల్ కి వెళ్ళి ఎస్ఆర్సి ని డ్రాగ్ చేయి హలో యా ఎస్ఆర్సి ని డ్రాగ్ చెయ్యి ఎక్స్ కోఆర్డినేట్ వన్ ఫిఫ్టీ లోకి వెళ్ళు వై కోఆర్డినేట్ వన్ ఫిఫ్టీ లోకి వెళ్ళు డాట్ బిల్డ్ డాట్ పర్ఫామ్ సో బిల్డ్ అండ్ పర్ఫామ్ ఈ ఆప్షన్ ఏంది అంటేనండి డ్రాగ్ ఒక యాక్షన్ డ్రాప్ ఒక యాక్షన్ రెండింటిని కలిపి సింగిల్ యాక్షన్ కింద బిల్డ్ చేస్తుంది ఆ చేసిన యాక్షన్ ని పెర్ఫామ్ చేయాల్సి వస్తుంది సో జనరల్లీ ఎప్పుడైనా మీరు యాక్షన్స్ క్లాస్ యూస్ చేస్తా ఉంటే చివరాకరణ మ్యాండేటరీగా డాట్ బిల్డ్ అండ్ డాట్ పర్ఫామ్ యూస్ చేస్తే ఈజీగా ఆ యాక్షన్స్ ని అది పర్ఫామ్ చేస్తుంది అండి ఓకే ఈజీగా ఆ యాక్షన్స్ ని అది పర్ఫామ్ చేస్తుంది దట్స్ ఫైన్ ఇప్పుడు ఒకసారి రన్ యాజ్ ఏ జావా అప్లికేషన్ అని కొడితే రన్ యాజ్ ఏ జావా అప్లికేషన్ ఓకే సో అది ఏం చేస్తుంది అంటే ఒక కొత్త పేజ్ లోకి వెళ్ళి డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ పర్ఫామ్ చేయాలి చూద్దాం సో మ్యాక్సిమైజ్ చేసి ఓకే అవ్వలేదు ఎందుకు అవ్వలేదు జస్ట్ వన్ సెకండ్ లెటర్ సి ఏంది ఇష్యూ ఏంది మూవ్ టార్గెట్ అవుట్ ఆఫ్ బౌన్స్ ఎక్సెప్షన్ సే ఈ సిచ్యువేషన్ లో నాకు మాక్సిమైజ్ విండో కమాండ్ ఉందా లేదా లేదా ఒకసారి దీంట్లో ఏం చేస్తున్నాను అంటే విండోని మాక్సిమైజ్ చేస్తా డ్రైవర్ డాట్ మేనేజ్ డాట్ విండో డాట్ మాక్సిమైజ్ ఇచ్చి రన్ యాజ్ ఏ జావా అప్లికేషన్ అని చేస్తున్నాను దిస్ టైం ఇంకొకసారి రన్ చేసి చూద్దాము అవుతుందా అవ్వట్లేదా అని ఓకే సో మాక్సిమైజ్ చేసి రన్ కొడితే అది ఎగ్జిక్యూట్ అవుతుంది సో బ్రౌజర్ ని మాక్సిమైజ్ చేయాలి ఫస్ట్ థింగ్ చేసింది అప్లికేషన్ ఓపెన్ చేసింది చేసిన తర్వాత సి కిందకి డ్రాక్ చేసింది ఇందాక డిఫరెన్స్ ఏంది అంటే మన బ్రౌజర్ మినిమైజ్ మోడ్ లో ఉండడం వల్ల మనం ఇచ్చిన కోఆర్డినేట్ ని అది ఐడెంటిఫై చేయలేకపోయింది సరిగ్గా ఆ కోఆర్డినేట్ ఈ బ్రౌజర్ హైట్ అండ్ విత్ కి సరిపోలేదని వచ్చింది ఎక్సెప్షన్ అందుకని నేను బ్రౌజర్ ని మాక్సిమైజ్ చేయడం వల్ల కోఆర్డినేట్ ని ఐడెంటిఫై చేసుకుని ఆ ఎక్స్ కోఆర్డినేట్ కి వై కోఆర్డినేట్ కి కరెస్పాండింగ్ ఆబ్జెక్ట్ ని మూవ్ చేసింది అట్లా డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ మనం పర్ఫామ్ చేయొచ్చు అట్లానే ఇదే అప్లికేషన్ లో ఇక్కడ డ్రాపబుల్ అని ఉన్నది ఈ సిచ్యువేషన్ లో నాకు దేన్ని డ్రాగ్ చేయాలి దేని మీదకి డ్రాగ్ చేయాలి తెలుసు ఆ సిచ్యువేషన్ లో నాకు ఉండే ఇంకొక సెకండ్ కమాండ్ ఏంది అంటే కనుక డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ సో ఇదే స్క్రిప్ట్ ని నేను ఇంకొకసారి కాపీ పేస్ట్ చేస్తున్నాను వన్ సెకండ్ మొత్తం స్క్రిప్ట్ అంతటిని కాపీ పేస్ట్ చ
సోర్స్ కి ఐడి ప్రాపర్టీ ఉన్నది డ్రాగబుల్ ఐ గెస్ ఇందాక మనం వేసేసామో అదే ప్రాపర్టీ సో ఇప్పుడు డెస్టినేషన్ డిఫైన్ చేయాలి దేని మీదకి డ్రాప్ చేయాలో సో వెబ్ ఎలిమెంట్ డెస్టినేషన్ ఈజ్ ఈక్వల్ టు డ్రైవర్ డాట్ ఫైండ్ ఎలిమెంట్ బై ఐడి ఐడి ప్రాపర్టీ ఏది ఇది డ్రాపబుల్ అంట దాన్ని తీసుకెళ్ళి ఇక్కడ పెట్టేశాను నేను సేమ్ యాక్షన్స్ క్లాస్ ఈసారి నేను యూజ్ చేయాల్సిన కమాండ్ డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ సోర్స్ నుంచి డెస్టినేషన్ మూవ్ చెయ్యి బిల్డ్ చెయ్యి యాక్షన్ ని పెర్ఫామ్ చెయ్యి ఇప్పుడు కనుక నేను రన్ చేస్తే నాకు ఏమవుతుంది అంటే ఈ అప్లికేషన్ ఓపెన్ చేసి దాని మీదకి వెళ్ళి డ్రాగ్ అండ్ డ్రాప్ ఫంక్షనాలిటీ పెర్ఫామ్ చేస్తుంది సో లెట్ అస్ సి సో ఈసారి బ్రౌజర్ ని మాక్సిమైజ్ చేస్తుంది అండ్ ఇట్ పర్ఫార్మ్ దాట్ ఆపరేషన్ అట్లా డ్రాగన్ డ్రాప్ ఫంక్షనాలిటీకి ఉన్న రెండు కమాండ్స్ చూసామా 